Oh, they actually have a gallery where you can save your drawings. Is that in the demo? Hey, Snessy. The pork in the pine has arrived. <laughs> yeah, we're going to be waiting another five minutes, letting people roll in. I like how they still have the mod section. Man, I cannot wait for the modding community to start. You will hug the gator and you will like it. <laughs> Or is that I can't tell because of that stupid reaction, that little heart reaction blocks everything. Now let me text Blaze to see when he's starting his PAL world so that way I have like a frame of reference of how long the stream's gonna be. I want to hug that gator. We all do. That's why we're here. Nine people right away. <laughs> that is nuts. <clears throat> now we'll go hopefully for two or three hours. And then I'm probably going to do another post stream with uh, Blaze. We'll probably be playing Tower Unite. Catching up with all the new content we missed. There were some mods while the game was still in the demo phase. Seven hours? Seven hours for what? I want to hug that gator. Hey, Howling. Where's my timer? All right, we're halfway through. Saw the urge to hug that gator. <laughs> All the videos in, if I recall, were in Spanish, though. Yeah, Sp the Spanish community, the, they are crazy. I don't mean that in a bad way, but, like, they are on a whole different level. Stream for seven hours. I'm not going that long. Eight hours was the most you guys got from me. I know your Spanish jurial. <clears throat> Bit zesty. All the mods. That's the thing though, everyone's jumping on to just stream this game mainly, but how many are going to fall off once the mods start dropping in? I don't think the what do you call them, tourists or whatever? I mean, I want, I'd like to call them tourists, but there's, there's like very, very, uh, hell, I can name only one, and that's Smug Fox, who went through all of those mods for Snoop Game. Yeah, the market for mods for streaming is, or just videos in general, is just so low. Kiss that gator. Spanish YouTubers are to blame for the Spanish invasion on the Snoop community. Yeah, what was his name? Uh, that dog in a cup. I forget his name. Super, I just made it. Well, you're lucky. <laughs> made it just in time. We got less than a 30 seconds left, I say. Eighteen people ready for Gator. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put, actually, probably put a do not disturb on that, and it would translate. Yep. Cool. No more interruptions. Yeah, that's, that's five minutes of waiting. Yeah, I guess we can start. Just finished your last stream. Dang, that's even double lucky. Are you ready, Marines? Every one of you want to kiss that gator, say yes. Yeah, hunt Leo. Yes, yes. 
Thanks for reminding me. All right. Mornings in the pain residence were lively to say the least. Or maybe it's because it's a Saturday. That is to say, my weekend sleep schedule was cut far shorter than I would have liked. Mostly by Damien's little brother landing feet first on my chest and knocking the air out of my lungs. Thank you! It's the second time in a row. I sputter and I set up in an attempt to get to get back some precious oxygen. Vinny immediately sat on the pedal I had used. Morning, Vinny. A check of my phone says that it's still half past seven. Four hours too early. The TV flickers to life, and Vinny starts flicking through the channels at a speed only he can comprehend. Morning, Inko. Sorry about the wake-up call. It's Vinny's favorite season. Winter? Hockey. Vinny cheers loudly, and I look to the screen to see a player being brutally slammed into the protective glass of the ice rink. Ah. Is Olivia up yet? Damien shrugs. Probably not. You guys were up pretty late last night. Plus, it's the weekend. Best to just let her sleep off the food coma. She'll come out of her room eventually. Fair enough. As much as I would enjoy sleeping in as well, Damien and Vinny have taken occu occupancy over my pseudo bed. There's, there's the recliner just next to us, but I'm not going to defile what must be Randy's throne. May as well stay up then, I guess. Mind if I get a bowl of cereal? Help yourself, amigo. At least I can check on any updates with my blogs. I head into the kitchen and make myself a bowl, being sure to add some sugar and honey from the condiments cupboard this time. Taking a seat at the table, I begin scrolling through my phone's feed while shoveling cereal into my mouth. I'm barely a minute in before I realize I'm not even reading anything on my phone screen. There are words, but they aren't saying anything, just paragraphs of probably fake personal events and vague calls to action. Have they always been this vapid? I decide to finish my breakfast without any literary TV static distracting me. Afterwards, I rejoin Damien and Vinny in the living room, both of whom are absolutely enthralled by the hockey game playing on the TV. With every hit of the puck or rogue shoulder check, the brothers explode with either excitement or devastation. The two also take turns assaulting me with more hockey trivia than I'll ever be able to use, particularly about Vinny's favorite goalie. And then he got in the fight with the entire hockey team and was transferred to this one. He's great! He's not that great. You just like him because he gets into the most fights. Yes! You sure like this sport. Heck yeah, the games are my, just my kind of thing. That guy that's up there right now is so cool, he's... Are you freaking kidding me? Oh, that's a load of bull. Why didn't McDonald get the, the penalty? That guy sucks. Vinny, language. Sorry. Vinny, tell him about your collection. Oh, oh, I got all the bobbleheads for this team. Let me show you. Does he actually like the sport, or is it or just the constant brawling? Is there really that much of a difference? Yeah. Jokes aside, yeah, he actually likes it despite the ice. We should play some street hockey sometime once it warms up. You up? Not if it's always this chaotic. Relax, there's protective gear you can use. That's not the point. Here they are. The young boy dumps an armful of beaten up plastic figures onto my lap. Oh wow, that's a lot. Vinny grins as he takes each of the wobbly head figures and gives me a brief explanation on who exactly they are. This bruiser here, he's known for his mean right hook. Oh, oh, and... With descriptions like that, I'm absolutely sure I'd rather sit out any game involving Vinny. 
Soon enough, I feel a distinct vibration in my pocket. Pulling out my phone again, I check my notifications to see a text message from Olivia. Ding ding, room service. Come drag me out of bed. <laughs> Figured she'd need help. After all, there's no way she's dragging herself anywhere with that knee. I excuse myself from the living room and head towards Olivia's room, with Damien giving me an approving nod. I make sure to knock twice before letting myself in. Morning, sleepyhead. Morning, stupid head. With Olivia's wounded knee, carrying her is even more difficult than before. I hate to admit it, but I almost dropped her at least twice on the way. Thank Raptor Jesus for Coach Solly's training. But at last, we're here. Welcome back to the land of the living. Morning, Livia. Olivia, wait, Olivia, eyes still closed, mumbles out what sounds like good morning as I set her down on the couch. How are you feeling? Alright, I guess. Still a bit groggy. What about you now? I pat my knee, which Olivia seems to pick up on. Alright, feels a bit better. Tingly feelings gone, but it looks, it looks swollen. I might need to redress it then. Hopefully it should be more manageable by Monday. By the way, what did you do with the ice pack? Oh, Guts is using it as a waterbed. Sure hope it doesn't pop. Stagnant ice pack water sounds terrible to be in. Damien and Vinny start shouting in victory as the home team gets the final score. What a slap shot! Heard the excitement in the room. Watching hockey again? Sophia settles herself on the recliner, opening up her laptop. Oh, the school's weekly newsletter just came in. Turn down the volume, Damien. Sure thing. All right. First, it says there's a basketball, there's a basketball game this Friday against the Tail Spikes. In preparation for finals, tutoring will be open after school for everyone that needs it. Damien. I got it covered, Mom. Liz is helping me out. I hope so. Senioritis won't be tolerated here. Oh, this is interesting. To all our students, you are invited to St. Hammond's High School, High School's 201 M2023 BC Winter Formal. There's the prom. There it is, guys. We are we are so close to the school dance. Kind of bummed right now since I just went back to get ending one, but I started on getting four and rewatching the good emotional scenes is lifting my mood. That's good. Winter informal. Damien yawns as stretches his arms behind his back. Yeah, some event for seniors they got every year. Basically a dance, but more fancy. It's like the biggest event of the year. You know, next to graduation or prom or whatever. I don't think any of my previous schools ever did something like this. Just regular dances. Immerse yourself in the serene beauty of the wintry night sky with music, food, entertainment, and much more. We will also be hosting a special memorial for one of St. Hammond's finest teachers who has recently passed away. Mr. Trent Eikaden. Or Eidekin. Hmm... Shoot, that's going to be tough to see. The event will take place at the Volcadera Convention Center on Friday, December 15th from 7pm to 10pm. Tickets for the Winter Formal are now on sale online or in Mrs. Prockling's class in room 211. $15 for one and $30 for couples. Please read our event dress code to know what will and will not be allowed for the formal. Have a great weekend. Go Feathertails! Oh, it seems like you three have something to look forward to next month. Mrs. Payne closes her laptop with a smile and sets it aside. Mom, it, Mom, it's about that time. She gasps and checks the clock on the wall. I nearly forgot. Vinny, get, get your kimono on. I'll start the car. It's called a gi, Mom. I'll probably be running some errands while he's at karate practice, so I'll be out until dinner. 
Man, this kid is violent. <laughs> missed a stream, but this seems real interesting. Well, you can always go back and watch them. You don't need to miss anything. I'm sure Vinny didn't mean to karate chop my throat as he got up. He's just eager to get to class. The back from Olivia helps clear my airway quicker, at least. Well then. Damien switches on some games and slumps in his familiar position in the recliner in mere seconds. I don't even know how he keeps track of the blurs, blur of colors on screen. I feel like it's going to give me a seizure if I look too hard. So you two are going together and smooching, right? <laughs> oh no. A powerful crushing force attempts to pulverize my fingers into mulch. Oh my god, Damien, you can't just start a conversation like that. Olivia's hand relents and leaves my palm feeling tender. Relax, I'm joking. Sorta. Your arm's around her shoulder and all. When did that get there? I go to remove it, but Olivia holds on tight. Yeah, well, you plan on going to the winter formal with Liz? Hell yeah, why wouldn't I? That was a fast answer. He shrugs. You, well, the formal, I don't... Hmm. <clears throat> Well, I mean, I'm still stuck at home, you know? Crap, yeah. You know when you'll get that replacement chair? Uh, could be a week. Could be longer. The mail system around here is annoying. Jeez. Hey, I'll come visit every day after school. Aw, oh, thanks. Still, that's at least a week of her not stepping foot outside. Damien was only half-joking about us going to the winter formal, and that's definitely a good idea. But first... Hey, Olivia. Hmm? When you get your wheelchair back, can you go anywhere? Where do you want to go? Anywhere. Wait, so you're ask You're asking me out? She falls eerily silent as she turns her head towards me, eyes wide open. Yeah, I'm asking you out on a date. I'll take you wherever you like. <laughs> Olivia's mouth opens and closes while she looks at me in astonishment. Olivia, you okay? Oof. I find myself trying not to laugh. Olivia threw herself at me in the strongest hug I ever felt. Was this the fifth hug? Her arms and even her tail wrapped around me, pressing me tightly against her as she laughs in that cute gremlin giggle of hers. And while that giggle giggling is infectious, my face is pressed against Olivia's ample bosom. <laughs> Come on, guys, get a room. No, too happy. Getting a little hard to breathe now. Gosh, this is the first good thing to happen in forever. I can't even move my arms. Olivia's caught them against my own sides. Wait, she's shifting. We're on our sides now, and I can finally pull my head up enough to take in some air. So, whoa! Ah, sweet. Death roll. So that's what's happening. As I feel myself flipped over Olivia for a split second, and then I'm back into being beneath her. And then back again, with just enough time to breathe. Olivia, we haven't even decided where to go. I feel like I'm on the I feel like I'm on some kind of personal carnival ride being spun wildly around across the living room floor in Olivia's arms. It's fun, but very dizzying. When the gator finally tires herself out, I find myself laid atop of her. And while I should feel very embarrassed about the com her compromising position. Oh, here we go. I'm Oh, we're, we're looking at it. Water break. The sixth hub. Do you see? I knew chat would be counting better than I was. <clears throat> Alright, uh, H. I'm grinning ear to ear, looking down at my equally happy and light-headed girlfriend beneath me. You good, Inko? Pretty wild response, you just asked where a date would be. Doesn't matter. Her voice shrinks enough so that even as I clo as close as I am to her, I can barely make it out. I was hoping for so long. 
seeing that gentle smile of hers, it sets my heart aflutter. So, where'd you want to go? You decide. I got nothing. I got nothing. Where do you want to eat? Well, I don't know. You pick. Me? Somewhere I can take Olivia to really show her a good time. How about a picnic? See if it warms up a bit and check out some of the more scenic places around. In the middle of winter? Volcadera is beautiful. I want to explore it a bit. So do I. For a brief moment, the connection between Olivia and I feels stronger than ever as we stare into each other's eyes until she goes right back into keeping me in her warm, scaly embrace. Sure, it was right in the middle of the living room with Damien still present, but none of that matters to me. The rest of our day was spent in that living room, playing more games on the old TV. Hours flew by, and Olivia kept switching up games. I think she was trying to find something that I would particularly enjoy, or at least be good at. Shame, then, that I had seemed to have been born lacking any gaming talents at all. Never too late to start. We still had fun, at least. When the sun began to set, though, I decided I should head home. I needed a shower and a change of clothes, and both of Damien's parents were still out. I felt bad when I left Damien's place that night. Or rather, I felt bad looking at Olivia as I walked away from his house. It only grew worse as I went from the metro to my quiet neighborhood and ultimately our empty home. Seeing the small piles of letters at the front door made me realize what that feeling was. Loneliness. Maybe I should have just waited to ask the pains if I could have spent the entire weekend. If I did that, how would, would I be overstaying my welcome? I don't want to abuse their hospitality after all. Ping! Drawing my phone from my pocket, I see that Olivia sent me a new doodle. <laughs> Coming tomorrow? Well, I can handle a little loneliness for now. Sure. Kicking my door closed, I head for my computer so I can continue talking to her online. I lose track of how much time we spend in instant messaging and sharing videos, but by the time I check my computer's clock, I realize it's past midnight. I didn't even go through my typical routine of checking for updates to my forums and blogs. Shoot, I'm gonna be exhausted tomorrow. Totally worth it. Alright, water break. The next few days went very similar to the first. Visiting the Payne residence and hanging out with Olivia's family became my new routine after school. On Monday, I got around to shoveling the snow off of the driveway like, like Randy had asked me for. It was a laborious to-do. It was laborious to do, but it felt good to get it done. Felt even more rewarding when Randy thanked me with some shishimi he mentioned during the weekend. Eventually, I had gotten into the habit of leaving sticky notes for my parents, letting them know where I was. Not that they care too much as long as I'm home by bedtime. I won't lie, spending most of my afternoons watching Vinny and Damien yell at the TV wasn't particularly entertaining, but Olivia's presence was enough for me. On Friday, though, while Vinny and Damien were preoccupied by a foam sword duel in the backyard, I decided to plan for our date. The weather that weekend was supposed to be warm, and I managed to convince Olivia that, would th that this would be our last chance for a real picnic. That only leaves the location. We've been arguing well into the night over text, trying to decide where to go. I think the beach would be nice. No way. The marine lair will screw with the weather. How about we go back to the arcade? Based, we go back to the arcade. She decided. She decided. Seriously? That place smelled horrible. <laughs> You're right. There's nowhere worth going to in Volcadera Bluffs anyways. Volcadera Bluffs, huh? Does Volcadera actually have bluffs? 
Yeah, dummy, the place was named after them. Have you ever seen them? <laughs> no. <laughs> Sounds perfect, then. Those are ages away. Come on, it'll be fun to get away from home for a bit. Fine. I'll be over in the morning, then. Okay, sure. Nighty-night. I let my phone rest on my bed as I smile to myself. I'll have to look up where exactly the bluffs are in the morning, but I'm sure they'll look nice. And if not, well, there ought to be something exciting there. After researching our destination and getting dressed, I did one last check of myself to make sure I hadn't forgotten anything. Wallet, phone, water bottle, extra sunglasses, written instructions for the metro lines we'd have to take. I'm officially ready to go. Before I leave, I make sure to leave a sticky note on the fridge to let my parents know where I'll be. Maybe they'll finish watching daytime television in time to see it before I get home. Huh. I got text. 5.30, It was my alarm. Hold on. I have to d disable that alarm. No, we're not snoozing. Alright. There we go. It's only a short trip to the closest station to Olivia's neighborhood, and a short walk from there to her house. Payne's place was as, is as welcoming as ever. It's starting to feel a bit like a second home by now. In the chilled weather, the yard's growth has slowed, but it's starting to peek through the thin layer of snow. My voice is just like, bleh. <laughs> I hope I'm not commissioned to mow now, too. I should let Olivia know I'm here. I'm here, are you ready? We're not doing eight hours. I'll be out in a minute. Is the door unlocked? No, 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 don't come in yet. What? Just stand by the curb and be ready. This is gonna be cool. Oh boy. I stand by the curb as instructed, facing the door. After a moment, it swings open and... Whoosh. A green blur shoots out the door and directly for me. I know better than to flinch. Olivia's tail slams the ground and breaks her to a halt with a stylish skid. You're here! I am. It looks like you finally got your wheelchair. Yeah, it came in just yesterday. Didn't want to tell you to make it a surprise. Hmm. Has that new wheelchair has that new wheelchair smell? Dummy. Well it looked the same. I do notice how it's lacking all the old scarring her old original one had. So did you hear it? Hear what? Exactly. I can sneak up on you now. In your dreams. So uh you ready for a date? There's a sudden rush of jittery nerves in my in my chest. It is my first time taking someone out on a date. Trying to rationali rationalize it still doesn't help my nervousness, though. Yeah, I'm ready. She looks at me with a timid smile, hands held together as she tilts her head back, or er, tilts her head slightly. She's wearing a new floral hair hair clip. Come to think of it, it's the first time I've seen her ever accessorize. I uh, hmm. The hair look. That hair clip looks cute, Olivia. The worry in her grin melts away into a fully joyous smile. Thank you, Inko. Which also helps to ease my own. With my renewed confidence, I step around Olivia and go to grab the candle bars. Oh, wait. You've been out all week. You probably don't need any help. No, it's fine. Her tail takes my wrists and guides my hand to the handle. I don't mind at all. Alright, to the metro station? Yes, please. With Olivia in tow, our date begins. Alright, water break. On the metro, I'm lucky enough to be able to find my normal seat. Olivia folds up 
folds the seat up and places herself right next to me. Something's different. Oh wow, Christmas lights? I swear they start setting up earlier every year. The white fluorescence of them, combined with the dimmed lighting of the metro's lights, gave the cabin a more cozy feeling. I feel my photographer's instinct kicked in, but remember, but quickly remember that I didn't bring my camera. Soon enough, the whole city will be covered in holiday stuff by the end of the weekend. The mental Im image of a twinkling Volcadera at night is, ple is a pleasing thought. There will definitely be some photo-worthy shots during that time. What do you think of all of it? The decorations? I like them. Why wouldn't I? Yeah, but what's your favorite? I think the wreaths look pretty uh, pretty nice on the lampposts. I like all the crappy snowmen and snow angels in people's yards. I always wanted to make my own. How about the mistletoe? Yeah. Shut up, you. Actually, I'm curious. Are there any dino-specific tra traditions that you guys celebrate during the winter season? Olivia cocks an eyebrow at my question. Hey, I didn't know you guys celebrated end of summer, so I'm just curious if there's other Saurian-centric holidays I don't know about. Nope, just Christmas or whatever holiday people celebrate around this time. There's probably no dedicated one out of spite of the cold. That's fair. Now I can't help but think of doing some ice skating with Olivia. How would that even work? Surely there's wheelchair access for it, right? I look down at Olivia's wheelchair to imagine how it'd work when something interesting catches my eye. There's a small compartment underneath her seat, almost like a cubby hole, with some things inside it. What's that? Oh, I uh, decided to bring my sketch pad with me. You know, since my first time going to the bluffs, I wanted to draw out the scenery while we're there. Maybe I shouldn't have. Huh? No, that's completely fine. I was just thinking how I should have brought my camera for the same reason. So I'm glad at least one of us came prepared. As long as we enjoy our time there, that's all that matters. <laughs> You're right. Olivia takes hold of my hand as she rests her head on my shoulder. Bladed Olivia sounds dangerous, yes. Eventually, the metro arrives at her destination. After disembarking, the train and leaving the station, my digital map indicates the park is still about a block away. As we make our way there, we soak in the sights of this area of Volcadera. Just like Olivia predicted, many of the surrounding buildings are getting decorated for the holiday season. I've never been around these parts of the city before. Only seen them on car trips. So this is the first for both of us. I can only imagine what it'll look like once all of this is set up. Yeah, maybe we can come back here to visit once it is. I like the sound of that. We enter into the park's main parking lot. Looks like there's a decent amount of people here this evening, which is surprising given that it's still relatively chilly. Then again, such a prominent landmark in the city would still draw in a crowd, even with certain weather con conditions. Oh, there's some food trucks! I'll cover the picnic part. Looks like I got a decent variety of things. Tacos, sandwiches, chicken... Shoot, looks like they have all a bit of looks like they all have a bit of a line to them. Plenty of time to do other stuff. I'm not very hungry yet anyways. Glancing around, there's a few gaps in the tree lines. Tree line with trails heading into them. I'd wager I'd wager they're nature trails, maybe bird watching ones. Do you want to try one of those trails? Olivia looks almost disappointed as she glances between me and the food trucks. We could, we could grab a snack first before we head in if you want. She, shim she simply shakes her head. I can wait. Plus, I don't want arm—I don't want any arm cramps on the trail. All right then, let's go. I'll leave you in. A <sighs> you know what? Water break. How about that? Take two and come back.
Olivia and I head towards the sign indicating where the trail begins, le leisurely walking across the dirt path. The mood is somewhat dampened by the hikers to our front and back, but it doesn't make the natural landscape any less calming. Honestly, I wasn't sure you'd agree to this. What, a date? No, the hike. You don't seem very interested in nature. Well, I normally wouldn't, since a lot of places outside of the city aren't built for people like me. But I thought it'd be nice if you were here. My heart flutters for a second. I'm glad to hear you say that. I think it's a nice break from how busy everything else is, out here. It's just you and the world, isn't it? Hmm, <laughs> yeah, I can see that. You plan on sketching out any landscapes? I was planning to before we got here, but I think it'd take too long. Just a sketch, then? I'll think about it. It's not easy reading this much. I have, I have, I have speech issues. <laughs> so I'm, I'm running on hard mode here. Oh. We continue for another few minutes, admiring the passing scenery. There's less hikers than before. I'd noticed some hanging back for pictures or moving faster ahead. That was a while ago now. It's just us and the trees. You think any of the others are in, in this sort of thing? Hmm, the others? Liz, Damien? Nah, probably not. Unless it's community service or something, Liz wouldn't be interested. And Damien's only interested in setting ants on fire with a magnifying glass. Something wrong? No, I just... Imagine Mia driving a tractor for some reason. <laughs> Seriously? Yeah, you think she could pull it off? She, you think she could pull off the farmer look? I refuse to imagine that. Regardless, a mental image of the burgundy wearing bruiser in overalls and straw hat invades my head. I hate you. <laughs> Shaking the thought from my head, I look around to reacquaint myself with the trail. Something's off. This place is quieter than I thought it'd be. That's how the woods are, city boy. We live 15 minutes apart. Yeah, I like it quiet. It's nice not to have anybody to worry about. No Mia, no Ben, no Prockling, no Scaler. We have the whole world to ourselves, and no one else can ruin that. That's a good way of looking at it. I pat Olivia on the shoulder. She lets out a low groan as she rests her head against my hand. Are you tired already? No, just enjoying us. If it wasn't a cloudy day, I think my face was starting to get burnt. Another several minutes later and we're still going strong. You still doing okay? Yeah, I'm still good. It's still a bit surprising to me how your arms just don't give away give way from pushing yourself so often. Well, when you've done it for so long as I have, you start building a tolerance for it. And you've done it for a while, eh? As long as I can remember. It's Blaze, holy balls. 56 watching. Yeah, Blaze. You starting your Pal World stream? Yeah, I'll take a little break, guys. Just so I can get, like the gist of what's happening here. Ample time for a water break too. People want the gator. 6.30, that's in like 15 minutes. All right. You'll probably go for like two hours Olivia? Ah, crap. What the hell? I turn to face her, looking at the source of the sound. The wheel on her chair is stuck in an indentation on the trail, and she's struggling to push herself out. Without a word, I quickly step behind her and grab her handlebars, helping Olivia push herself from the natural trap. Also, I left a like. Thank you! 
Likes aren't obligated, but they are appreciated. Thanks, Inko, but what was that? I'm not sure. I take a closer look at the trail to investigate. The indentation that Olivia got caught in extends across the entirety of the trail. It almost looks like a... A tire track? Hmm? I think you got stuck in a tire track. What's a tire track doing on a hiking trail? Maybe somebody got lazy. This place is supposed to be pedestrian traffic only. I feel a wave of nervousness overcome me as I glance around the breadth breadth of the trail. When's the last time we saw a sign? Aren't there supposed to be maps around to tell us where we are? Where's everybody else? The, reali the realization dawns on me. I have no idea where we are. Huh? Dude, seriously? I thought you had planned this whole thing. I thought we were following the signs. Well, we need to find out where we are. I don't want to die out here. The trail has to lead to somewhere, right? If we keep going, we'll find something. Can we turn back? And risk getting turned around more? We can't be too far from something. Just follow the tracks. I would go crazy if Pork hit 100 concurrent viewers. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be a milestone. Should take a picture of that one. Okay, I trust you. With a heavy sigh, I lead the march along the trail we're on. It's probably some kind of service road park for service road for park rangers or maintenance workers who keep the trail safe. If that's the case, we're bound to run into something or somebody that can guide us in the right direction. For every minute that we keep looking for a sign of salvation, the darker it gets. Olivia suggested that I use my phone to find the right directions, but the lack of bars throws away any means of traversal guidance. Though I keep, a re though I keep reassuring Olivia that we'll get out eventually, there's a tinge of worry that begins to grow in the pit in my stomach. The last thing I want to do is spend, the, spend a night in the woods. Now, I don't like that game either. <laughs> At best, I know that as long as I have my phone's compass, we won't be moving in circles. So westward, we are bound, following the trail at a more cautious pace. It's as we crest a, uh, it's as we crest a blind turn north that we finally hear salvation. <laughs> Another human. Why, hey there. Oh, thank Raptor Jesus! Finally, another living being. The scruffy-looking gent looks like to be a park ranger. You two lost? Yeah, we sort of got mixed up on the trails and couldn't find any maps. Uh-huh, sounds about right. Happens all too often around here. Anywho, I'm assuming you two are looking for a particular sight to see? Yeah, do you know the way? He hums in thought for a moment with his head sweeping left and right. Finally, the ranger smiles and points at a particular path. Just wide enough for Olivia's chair. That one right there will lead you to the best view here. Then all you need to do to get back is to take any trail east. They all branch off near the park. Thank you so much, sir. Don't mention it. And call me Ranger Teddy. I'm assuming he's probably a uh, Easter egg of something. Or a reference. Taking the ranger's directions, we go down the narrow pathway. The thin pathway continues on for another 30 minutes and ultimately leads to a secluded table and railing. And the most breathtaking view. He has hair in a face. <laughs> Are we really going to dunk on Inko that much? Olivia gasps as her eyes peer over the protective rail and takes in the vista that is the bluffs. Over the edge, I can see a number of branches jutting out from the cliff face, and past that ocean laps at the base of the bluff. While I look below us, Olivia's eyes lock onto something further away. I follow her eyes and... Whoa! I'm really regretting my camera now. Because what I see... is a one in a million shot. 
taking a spot on the rickety wooden table. I feel a, I feel it groan beneath me. Spot beam, this spot must be one of the less trekked to if the stuff here is in such disrepair. Knowing that, I feel like the spot is more private. Like our own little view of Volcadera. Hey, Inko? Yeah. She holds up a sketch pad, giving me the sweetest pitiful look. Do we have time to... Oh yeah, of course. I'm sure we can manage to get back as long as the sun's still up. Her smile radiates with the power of a thousand suns. Her hands quickly flip the pad open to a fresh page and starts on the sketch. Compared to her deliberate strokes when painting or doing calligraphy, her sketch pencil moves in quick, rapid strokes. I'll see you later, Joriel. Have a good night. Her head is constantly moving between the page and the cliff view, and her eyes carry an ember in it, akin to when we'd gone to the arcade. As Olivia's engrossed with the drawing, the beautiful bluffs, I'm engrossed by the bait, the, <laughs> the beautiful girls drive to create. Still, time passes and the sun slowly moves lower and lower. A cool gust of ocean air blows over us, and I see the shiver run through Olivia. Checking the time, it's only about four o'clock. I curse the short winter days, because Olivia is out of time. Olivia. Almost done. The page is almost fully used, showing a very rough duplicate of the cliffside she had been focused on. I know it's cringe, but if some of you haven't done so, feel free to subscribe to make it easier to see Pork's future content. <laughs> Thanks, Blaze! <laughs> oh. Speaking of Easter eggs, there's chapters in the game that you can check with suddenly. Discord, when you play the game, have Discord open and Discord Rich Presence turned on. Discord shows the name of the chapter you're on. Really? I think I have it turned on. Let me check my Discord. Actually, it wouldn't, it wouldn't say anything because I'm streaming. Whoops. <laughs> Whoops. I'll have to do it out of my own time. Her final touch was to add a simple signature to the only blank spade she had left, holding the full drawing up in triumph. Wow. I know, right? The sheer smugness radiating from her, radiating from her grin lasts for all of a minute, wiped away by another ocean breeze that make us both shiver. Even her nose scrunches up in irritation as she sniffles heavily. <laughs> Holy shit, that sounded like a fucking shotgun. Like, follow, and subscribe. Come for the gator, stay for the porcupine. That's the real people right there. You want to see a live reaction to the finale, but you should go back and watch the build-up. It's worth it. Yeah. You gotta get the whole story. Especially as it bounces off the cliff wall. I think she even managed to spook the seagulls nesting in the branches down below. Bless you. She grumbles her thanks as she wipes at her irritated nose. You okay? Yeah. She sniffles again. Sea air just sucks. The atmosphere is cooling rapidly too. We should get going then. Some warm food would be good. Not yet. When she sees my questioning look, sh she continues. I want to see the sunset first. Oh, that's going to be dangerous out in the woods. Are you sure? That means we'll have to take the, back, the path back in the dark. We'll be fine. As proof, she shines her phone's flashlight at me. All right, then. Instead of going back to the bench, I stand beside her at the guardrail. Slowly, the sun starts to dip as if sinking into the sea. Just watching the natural world move on. Simply me, Olivia, and the wonderful view in our little private spot. Fingers gently wrapped around my hand, and I re reciprocate until our palms are interlocked. At least the sun crests the horizon as <laughs> at last the sun crests the horizon completely. The last ray of light illuminating Olivia's tiny smile. Come on, picture, 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 picture. No picture. 
robbed. Thanks to Ranger Teddy's directions, finding a way back to where we started, our hiking journey was easy, even if it was a bit too dark for comfort. Eventually, we make it back to the parking lot, just as the street lamps were turning on. When we return to the main area of the park, it's also gotten a lot less crowded. Some of the food trucks have called it a day and left as well. I'm glad Porcupine is finally getting more attention than I have. It's probably only going to be for the Gator streams, really. I'll probably still have my niche market for the guys who are really here for me, I guess. <laughs> but for now, we're going to enjoy some Gator. We're not cutting it close to the last Metro home, right? Yeah, the last one will be in another hour or so. Phew, I was worried I was taking too long. Then we'd have to stay overnight, alone in the wilderness. I want to check out those food trucks now. Here, here. Looks like some of the food trucks are still around. Probably they're drawing the late night crowd. And there's practically no lines for them either. Neat. Let's see, what sounds good to eat right now? What do you crave and live? Olivia? I glance over to see that she's looking over to the near to a nearby playground. Looks a bit derelict, having endured the outside elements for who knows how long. Still awesome. <laughs> Something catching your eye? It's just that I haven't been on a swing in ages. Oh, I hope this leads to a picture. Really? Back when I was little, yeah, whenever Damien's family took me to the park with them. Then I sort of stopped. Safety concerns and all that crap. I'm sure the trucks will be here for a while longer. Would you like to try it? Are you sure? I mean, it's getting pretty late. Come on, we got time. Okay, let's do it. Olivia wheels herself back towards the small play area of the park. I follow right behind, taking, a short, taking the short walk to examine the metal structure. Ghostlu just subscribed. Thanks for the subscription. The, sw the swing set looks rough, to say the least. The sport bar's paint is cracking off, showing the heavy rust beneath. The chains are crusty, covered in sparse remnants for of safety tubing. On the seats, they're all so loose and wobbly, I fear the entire thing would fall apart even if Vinny sat in it. Olivia, are you sure? Hold it steady, would you? I grasp the chains to hold the plastic seat in place while Olivia hops over to it. The metal and the plastic groan momentarily as Olivia settles herself in. She moves her tail aside so it doesn't smack into me. Well, uh, aren't you going to start pushing? All right. Olivia snickers for a moment as I place my hands on her back. Come on, picture, picture, picture. With a gentle yet firm push, Olivia begins swinging. It's a rhythmic motion now, to and fro. With every instance of her swinging back towards me, I push her with a bit more force to increase her momentum. Eventually, Olivia starts pivoting her tail to maintain her movement, meaning I no longer have to assist her. So, I position myself in front of her to watch as she, well, to watch as she swings like a pendulum. The creaking of the metal becomes a simple white noise as I look on with her at ease. The cool night breeze and the swing movements gently ruffle Olivia's hair. With a tubric smile, Olivia's eyes close as she loses herself to the simple enjoyment of swinging through the air. To see Olivia having a moment where all of her cares are gone, where there's no trouble or drama consuming her. To see her truly at peace. It's an image worth a thousand words, and, I hope n and one I hope never to forget. Oh, come on, no no picture? After a while, I sit beside her on the accompanying swing. Say, Olivia. Yeah. Her voice is a soft whisper of contentment. What, uh, what are you thinking? I'm thinking about today. It was nice. Really nice, Inko. Thank you for taking me here. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I was worried. Don't be. How could I not? It's my first date. Inko. Yeah? About the formal. 
Oh, do you not want to go? Olivia's eyes open and I can see them tremble. I want to go. It's just... Eidekin's memorial. Oh. It's tricky leaning to the side, but I managed to place my hand on her shoulder for emotional support. I understand, Olivia. Whatever you want to do, I'll support you. Her fingers ring together. I know you will, Inko. So, could you support me during the eulogy too? My hands cup her cheek tenderly as I give her my most reassuring smile. Of course, Olivia. Her eyes close once more as she leans into my hand, nuzzling against it. She sighs pitifully as I draw away, but still smiles. Thanks, Inko. I think I'm ready to go now. I nod gently and offer a hand to Olivia, helping her off the swing set and onto her wheelchair. We hold hands as we begin heading towards the exit, at least until Olivia needs her help to pu needs her hand to help push herself. I guess things won't ever be normal, but I'm okay with that. We grabbed our dinner from the taco truck, savoring the spiced meats on flour tortillas on the go. The walk to the metro isn't long, and before we know it, we're back on the train and racing back home. The ride back isn't particularly eventful. It doesn't look like there's many people in the cabin with us. We both take the, the opportunity to admire the city cityscape, especially now that it's reflected against the red and purple streaks that cover the sky. 45 minutes later, Olivia and I share a hug before she departs the train and starts to make her way back home. I watch her from the window of the metro as it takes off, and as her form disappears from my view, I feel an overwhelming sense of a relief. That went really well. I hope she'll be okay for tonight without me there. Maybe I'll ask Damien to keep an eye on her for me. I should stop worrying so much. She'll be okay, I'm sure of it. It's December. Winter in Volcadera Bluffs is officially here. And as if to celebrate the occasion, tonight is St. Hammond's Winter Formal. We're at the dance, boys! Water break. Oh yeah, you should have watched the previous stream. You probably just got spoiled, dude. Like, there's no obligation to be here. If you need to catch up, there's past streams. And I read all the comments I get, too. So don't worry, you're not going to miss much. <laughs> you you got to go back and you got to start from the beginning. <laughs> Hard to believe it's already here. It really crept up on me. Whenever I remember the events coming up, I just force it out of my mind. Drink that water. The whole thing has me pretty anxious. It's like a date, but on a whole new level. Like there's some formality to it. Better not mess this up. So someone spoiled saying, oh, if you get the red dress, it's a bad ending or something. But don't don't say anything. Don't say anything. Anyways, I find myself with a new difficulty in my life. Over and under and around and under tug. I reel and loosen the lethal neckwear from my collar, tossing the devilish cloth onto the floor in frustration. Scanning over the step-by-step -step instructions once more, I try to find out where I went wrong in my latest attempt. I consider going tieless, but damn it, it brings it the, whole love, the whole outfit together. And I want to look good for Olivia, because she'd be doing the same. Picking the slim fabric back up, I notice just how badly wrinkled and ugly it is. Time is running out, sadly. We still had class today, after all. Forget it. I have another shirt that works without the tie and still looks good. <laughs> just a black shirt. <laughs> Thumping the fashionable noose in my hamper and swapping outfits, my thoughts travel freely. Everyone in the school was excited for the formal. I'll leave when the ending draws near. All right. Though Olivia, she looked excited too, but there was something just beneath the surface. Anxiety, probably for Mr. Eidekin's vigil. Only Olivia, Ben, and I seem to remember that. 
the rest of the schools having moved on by now. Benen kept pestering Olivia about her speech, insisting to know what she'd say. The only thing that kept me from pushing the Stuco away was the fact that Mia would still give me the evil eye from the distance. And her janitor outfit. Oh, she has to chaperone as a janitor. <laughs> she deserves worse, but at least she's out of our hair. Check of the time says I don't have any time to try again. Tossing on the piece of the piece de resistance, the coat, I exit my room and head down for my foyer. My money is on my money is in my savings account. I'm gonna try and convert it online so I can buy the game. Don't do anything too rash. Tonight's gonna to be the best night ever. Probably. Definitely. I'll make it the best night ever for the both of us. I head through the foyer, towards my front door, and... Wait, Dad's home. Still dressed in his work uniform, hunched over the bar with a half-filled glass. Are we gonna see him? He hasn't noticed me. Well, not that it matters. As I open the front door, I hear a ro low grumble from behind me. Back by midnight. Without looking back, I head out. We don't even get to see him. The chill that washes over me is deflected by my formal wear. I can only imagine how hot this outfit would be in the summer. And again, I did wear a jacket consistently for the first month of school. Speaking of, I can't decide whether or not to keep the sunglasses with my outfit. It's hard enough to see outside as it is. Somehow, though, it feels wrong to take them off. Hoping not to waste any more time, I begin to walk to the metro. I really don't want to be late, especially not for Olivia. It's the same ride I've taken countless times this year, but this time it has a sense of finality to it. The rocking motions of the cabin are both calming and nauseating at the same time, and I find myself teetering between positivity and negativity. If there's one night I need to, need to go well, it's tonight. No dodgeballs to the face, no falling into pools, no harassment for anybody. I pray that Eidekin's eulogy goes smoothly. I find comfort in the routine walk from the metro to the Payne's, resi Payne's residence. As I stand outside the house, I realize I forgot to bring any flowers. But this isn't prom yet, so I think that's okay. It's December, and that means festivities. The house is adorned with rows of colorful Christmas lights. Guess who had to put those up, too? <laughs> It was worth it to see Vinny and Olivia smile like that, but man, at this rate, I'm going to get jacked into doing chores for them. After a quick knock on the door, I wait patiently for an answer. I hear some voices on the other side. Something about being too cold, I think. It was pretty funny the first time, but they do this every time I swing by. I didn't think the weather bothered them that much. A moment later, Damien swings the door open. Hey, hey, Inko, you're looking snazzy. Thanks. This is all new stuff. Think Olivia would like it? Probably. But she'd probably just be excited seeing you wearing any old suit. His dad must be John Cena. Well, it's the effort that counts, right? Yeah, like, I wanted to wear a t-shirt that looked just like the real thing, so I could be cozy or not have to deal with the, the ties or other annoying stuff. But mom threatened to beat the snot out of me if I did for some reason. Thought I'd get away with doing it anyways, but then Liz threatened the same thing. Girls, right? Anyways, come on in already. It's dang cold. He slams the door behind me when I step in. The inside is also decorated for the holidays. Sophia must have spent hours decorating as the living room is a tapestry of Christmas spirit. They even stuff it... It even suffuses the air, with the internal heating mixing with the scent of sweets baked with cinnamon. I'll have to ask her later to take pictures of this beautiful holiday scene within the living room. Oh dang, Liz! Liz and the Paines are all sitting in the living room. Hey guys! Inko, is it true you ordered a... Shh, shh, 
Like it's supposed to be a surprise for her. Oh. Thanks again, though. It's crazy getting one of those. Yeah, Olivia's gonna love it. I really think we should have pitched in more, though. Don't worry about it. It was my idea. Alright. Nice suit, by the way. Why, thank you. Damien nonchalantly takes a seat on the couch next to Liz and wraps an arm around her like it's no big deal. Yeet! Damien looks at me and flickers his eyebrows. He knows what he's got. What a player. I should try that with Olivia. Mrs. Payne can't hi hide her excitement any longer. Oh, that's precious. My little boy's all grown up now. Mom. Now, now, Damien. It's your parents' God-given right to tease you. One day you'll be the doing the same to your kids. Boy, you guys better not be like this all night. Where's Vinny when I need him? Vinny's with his karate team. They're having a big sleepover. Not risking our little rascal messing up someone's outfit before their big night. Oh lord, yeah, the idea of acid on my evening gown? I'd just die. Damien sniffles dramatically. Oh, stop it. So, uh, don't worry, Olivia's just getting ready. Mrs. Payne's voice carries a tone of worry with it. Turning to her, I see the older woman staring at Olivia's door. What is it, ma'am? She shakes her head with a smile, just shy of uneasy. Oh, nothing. I wanted to make the night extra special for her, so I decided to break out my old sewing machine. We are going to tailor the dress together, but... Another shake of her head. It's fine, Inko. Was it tough? Or was it, though? What if it isn't? What could I even do if it wasn't? I nod and lean back, letting the small talk between everyone else continue. My concern only grows heavier as we wait, though. And inevitably, we're gonna get a picture for sure, probably. Honk, honk. That must be your ride. Oh dear, I'll go and hurry Olivia along, then. My voice is quick to cut her off. I'll check, Mrs. Payne. All eyes are on me, all questioning why. I'll check. Damien, Liz, can you hold the driver for a bit? Damien flashes me a thumbs up and heads out. Was his body following after? Don't take too long, okay? Your head departs at my nod. Oh boy. Big reveal. It's a big moment. When I move to Olivia... Sorry, but can Olivia and I have some privacy? Big words! Please... Sophia almost protests, but thankfully Randy takes her hand. Better hurry, that driver won't wait too long now. They walk into the kitchen quietly whispering to one another. My knuckles tap on the door just hard enough that Olivia had to hear it. Another couple taps. Olivia? My fingers wrap around the handle of the door and twist. Oh boy. Pushing the door open, I'm greeted by sheer blackness. Inko? The sound of my blood pumping is in my ear from Olivia's weak voice. Quick as the light lightning, in my hand finds the light switch and flicks it on. And I see... Hey! The relief is so powerful I had to steady myself with a hand on the wall. I don't know what I was expecting. But Olivia's okay, just... You're not dressed. Oh, wrong words. Olivia sits atop her bed, still in the clothes she wore today in school. Not the handmade dress that's on her wheelchair. It's eer eerily similar to a month ago, how she curled up in her sheets, with wadded up paper once again spread over her bed. The only difference is this time is Guts, sitting in my spot, chewing idly on one of the pieces of paper. Olivia picks him up, nuzzling comfortly into, into her plush pet. What's wrong, Olivia? The ride is set down with a heavy sigh and Guts scampers away. With my spot freed up, I sit next to Olivia. I pick up one of the crumpled pages and unwrap it. 
To call Mr. Eidekin a teacher is to be unflattering. He was above and beyond that. He was beloved to all. The next line is crossed out. The rest of the lines are crossed out. They're all variations of the same few phrases put together in every possible combination. The strike throughs grow increasingly more aggressive with each line deemed unworthy. I pick up another sheet. It's the same thing. Each new page is just crossed out and attempts to get the thoughts in her head onto the paper. Stop that. Olivia, are you okay? That's a stupid question. No, I'm fine. It's just, it's been months and I'm still not ready to say goodbye. Meanwhile, everyone else has moved on. Stupid, isn't it? I understand. Hmm. You don't have to give a speech or anything if you don't want to. Olivia sags and sways her until her head is laid softly on my shoulder. <laughs> That's adorable. Water break. I feel her fingers intertwine with my own, and finally allow her anxiety to escape with a heavy and slow exhale. The minute of tranquility is then shattered by a blaring horn. Honk. What is that? Ah, oh, crap. I take my phone out to see a half dozen texts from Damien and Liz, all of them expressing my need to hurry up. Come on, hurry up. Is everything okay? Hey, dude, you there? Go without us. Something came up. We're gonna do something else. Alright, take care. With that weight off of our shoulders, I let my phone fall to the bed next to us. I told him to go on ahead. God, Inko, I'm, I'm sorry. You don't need to apologize. To see that the third ending or fourth, hopefully fourth. No, you spent all that time getting ready, and Auntie even helped me with the dress, but I can't, I can't do anything. Come on, Olivia, don't worry about it. I don't need to go to the winter formal, I just want to spend time with you. And we can still do that. Still, I don't want to sit around here, not again. Well, we could go out anywhere, any ideas? Nothing comes to mind. You just take a walk around and see what happens. Christmas decorations ought to be in full swing now, if nothing else. It takes a few moments, but Olivia's eyes slowly begin to light up. Okay, that sounds a little fun. Besides, I'd hate to waste a night with you all gussied up like that. Her sultry grin grows as she eyes me up and down. I'm blushing. I can I can tell I'm blushing. Anyways, sorry I couldn't do the same for you. It's fine. I'll find an excuse to make you wear it later. <laughs> you wanna go now? Yeah, could you help me up? Sure. Thanks. I stand up from the bed and bring over Olivia's wheelchair, helping her into it slowly. Let's go. Grabbing the chair from behind, I grab Olivia out of the room and through the deserted townhouse. On the metro, it's strangely emptier than normal. I gotta look at that. Man, these are looking like good wallpaper screens. just Olivia and I in the car for once. Now that I think about it, everybody's going to be at the formal, so is it really just Olivia and I tonight in general? The metro gently sways us back and forth while we wait for my stop. I glance over at Olivia through my sunglasses. She's turned back, staring out the window. Drifting through her own head as she repaints the world in her image. She does see things a little differently than most. It's a gift she should treasure more. 
man, is this really okay? I get the feeling that this is one of those things that she's always going to regret. Not that I should have forced her to go or anything. Still, I should probably try to do something about the situation. But what? Our stop is in another eight minutes. Hmm. My head fills with thoughts of my empty home and I consider... Is that where I should I bring her? Some lonely, isolated place? Maybe. A slapdash plan forms in my head. It's pretty stupid, honestly. And I'd be making it up as we go. It would be infinitely better than letting Olivia just hide away more. Five minutes. Olivia doesn't seem to be paying attention. Her head is turned, eyes focused on passing scenery through, through the window. She probably expects me to tell her where we're at my stop. I can feel the train slowing down just a bit more. So I stay silent and turn my head towards the window too. I guess she must she must be deep in thought because even as the train stops at her station, she doesn't even budge. It's the moment of truth. The doors slide open and then they shut. The train continues. We're now in untested waters. The train takes us to an unknown destination. Hope it's a good one. After a few minutes, Olivia comes out of her reverie, reverie confused. Reverie? Wasn't that our stop? Oh, was it? Oh, whoops. Oh, well. Oh, what? Inko, it's going to be an hour before it loops back around. Oh, we can get off the next stop and wait for a different train. Or take a taxi back. No biggie. You don't seem that surprised. Oh, well, I'm looking at it at like an opportunity. We can go do something neat. Something neither of us are expecting now, right? Yeah, I guess. I think that'd be cool, yeah. The metro starts slowing to a halt. I squeeze Olivia's hand. Adventure? Yeah, adventure. I gesture out of the door into a polite... Wait. I gesture out the door in a polite ladies first manner. And I start pushing her once she's away from the wall. The cold December air hits like a brick wall. Jeez, it's freezing. We, we exit the metro into a carefully placed stone path. District is enchanting, older buildings of faded stone and brick with colorful lights casting them in a magical glow. Older, but well kept, as we move along the cobblestone road, I feel as though Olivia and I had gotten off the train in another time period entirely. Gaslights, decorated with tinsel, replace the modern street lamps that are normally up the sidewalks. The difference between this place and the rest of Volcadera is night and day and manages to invite an even cozier feeling of the holidays. Whoa. It's the city's old financial district turned tourist spot. Hard to believe that it's managed to stick around after all these years. You been here before? Dad took me once. So what'd they have around here? Just some restaurants and shops. The usual stuff that any tourist spot's gonna have. But I think there's a few small art exhibits around here too, if you want to see those. It sounds good to me. We continue walking down and admiring the district, side by side. There's a few other dinosaur folk around the area, but it's noticeably clear that they're well wrapped for the sake of the heat retention. Thick coats and puffy jackets were the primary apparel, with some added scarfs and beanies to further aid in keeping warm. Though, even with it being purely for necessity, there, there's clearly a winter fashion scene to take advantage of. A small but noticeable chattering noise pauses my current train of thought. I look over to Olivia, who's doing her best to stop herself from vibrating in your chair. Only now does it dawn on me that Olivia's hoodie is the one thing that's shielding her from the frigid climate. Hold on a second. I quickly undo my coat and drape it over her. Thanks. It's worth getting my ass handed to me by snow. Wait, it's worth getting my ass handed to me by snow miser if it means keeping her somewhat protected from the cold. Shall we? I 
After a bit more walking, we find ourselves in front of a quaint bistro. Thinking about it, I am a bit hungry. There's, there's a few tables inside, but the outdoor seating looks relatively open. And there's even heat lamps near each table. I gesture towards it. Olivia glances over. She considers, and for a brief nod, oh, and gives a brief nod. When we enter, we share a mutual exhale as the warm embrace of modern air conditioning welcomes us. The Miser Brothers reference? I don't even know what that is. There's no line, but the tables are all occupied. The waitress behind the counter is sympathetic to Olivia's shivering, though, and offers us a patio table besides the largest heat lamp outside. Oh, more pictures, let's go. I think we got ending three, you say? Well, it's better than the other two. Our order of burger and fries was quickly made, and we were ushered into the warmest spot of the front of the restaurant. The warm burger and heated lights invigorated Olivia. I hadn't realized just how bad the cold weather affected her, and I feel relieved as I watch the color return to her scales. And as she recovers, so does her appetite. As I slide my plastic plastic basket of fries to her, I notice that the little square has gotten more populated. Despite the cold, several dino families fill the remaining seats. Some with food, some with just taking advantage of the heaters. Right, the feuding Miser Brothers, Heat and Snow, attending their family reunion with Mother Nature and their fellow siblings. Yeah, I don't know. Is that another Adult Swim thing? Something going on? I poke Olivia and gesture around. She shrugs. Oh god! <laughs> A few more minutes, an oddly dressed group crosses the middle of the square. Compared to everyone else, they're very underdressed for the weather. Wearing fur vests and oddly baggy shorts. There's ten of them in total. A family of feathered raptors. Swallowing a mouthful of burger, I turn to Olivia and ask to see... And ask and see an excited grin on her face. You know them? Shh. Oh man, I forgot it's Friday night. It's Fang Friday! It's actually Snoop Saturday, guys. There's always some live performers here. Just watch. Ooh. <laughs> this one looks a little bit lower quality, but I'll accept it. Whoosh! Whoa! An elder-looking dinosaur stands out in front with a microphone. He must be the leader. Ringmaster? We go Avatar the Last Airbender this shit. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. It's a truly magical, frosty night out, so let's warm things up just a little bit for everyone. Each member is adorned with various hoops and juggling pins that light a blaze. So please, gather and let this... Let the Ashtail clan share a little fire with everyone. And I will introduce myself. I am Firemaster Alejandro. I assure you, tonight is a very special show. We continue setting up. A sign is placed nearby with their socials on them. <laughs> I do a quick search and... Whoa! With these kinds of numbers, it must be quite the spectacle to, ga to garner an online audience of this size. Several children tug away from their parents and sit on a premier parameter set with rope one of the members had laid out. It makes me just a little bit nervous, but they're professionals, I hope. The actual ash tail. I don't know what that is. There's so many references here that just fucking... They just go right through me. We begin with the traditional Bateria de Filg Fugo. A drum beat starts playing from a nearby amplifier. It's a steady, strong beat, no doubt meant as a metronome for the group. A few seconds later, the troupe begins dancing. A rod spun a flame, creating wheels of fire as they ran about the square. The crowd cheers as the embers sweep by them. 
The Fire Master, a grandfatherly looking dino, is the wildest of them all. He wields a pair of chains, at the end of which are ablaze, and he spins them about with reckless abandon. That man alone is a veritable fire, firestorm among the rest of his troupe, even going as far as to let the fireballs bounce off his body to create more unique flame, flaming shapes. My steak fry sit abandoned as Olivia is entranced by the live performers, her silver eyes wide as she takes in, particu in a particular performer as he twirls about with flaming fans. Actually, looking at all the performers, they're all raptors. It's a family troupe. Shh. Indeed, all ten fire dancers look to be a, a single large family, though there were some minor differences between them. The biggest one being the small flourishes in their vest and prop. The tempo of the beat hastens, and the spiraling fire dancers move around their elder more swiftly. Then all at once, the drumming halts, and then the performers be bring their fiery props to a halt before them. The older leader's chains swing, up, swing straight up, the twin fireballs hanging over him for a split second. No alarm. Not now. The blazing orbs descend and... And flush! All the raptors exhale into their props as the fireballs crash into the, into the earth, creating a giant gout of flame outwards and a facsimile of a bomb blast. The fire recedes and the members of the troop regroup, the ringleader once more taking front and center. There's applause. A lot of applause. I didn't even realize I was clapping widely until I felt my palms sting. The elder dino motions for the crowd to quiet down, and once we were all silent, he makes to speak. Thank you, thank you. His accent is thick and his tone gravely, further showing his age. For those of you who are new to us, we are the Ashtail clan, the Ashtail family. The other nine members hoot together, blowing small flame pillars. We have been in these mountains since the... Im a memorial. He saunters around the open square, casually twirling his chain as though there weren't a softball-sized fire at the end of it. Generation upon generation, we have entertained visitors to Volcadera. I, Alejandro Ashtail, am the seventh head of the family. He pauses to let the crowd take in the information, and then struts back to his family. There's murmurs, and even other performers look confused as he wraps an arm around one of the female performers and moves back to the center with her. And this is my granddaughter, Mikrela? Mikrela? Is that how you pronounce that? I'm probably butchering it. Alejandro pushes the young woman forward, a slightly tall but more lanky, lanky raptor compared to the stocky leader. Well, let me check chat. Also, waifu incoming. Is this the waifu? <laughs> she looks to be about our age. Greetings, my friends. Tonight is also a special show for another reason. It marks the 25th year I have led this group. <laughs> Excuse me. It is also quite a lot. Is it not? It's hard to tell when you are getting gray hairs when so much of it tends to singe right off. He pauses for a chuckle from the audience. However, the sands of time stop for no one. So, that being said, it's time I step out of the spotlight and give a new generation their time to bask in it. And as I take my leave, it is the great honor for me to declare that she will be joining the ranks proper. I have taught her everything she knows, and I am proud of her. So please welcome her in and expect great things from her, for she will be inheriting the title tonight. Bit. <laughs> The entire family is whispering to one another now. This isn't staged. Ah, Mikuela, you are of age now. Twenty-five years to this day, my own grandfather had bestowed upon me these changes of leadership on this very spot. The crowd ooze. And on this day, my twenty-fifth year of performing, I find that you are ready, my granddaughter. The chains finally stop spinning. Alejandro now holding and presenting them to the crowd, and then his granddaughter. Go on, the crowd, she awaits. 
Laquella hesitates, her hands shying away from the chains as though it would burn her. I mean, she looks nervous. Grandpa, is this... this is... Up, up, up. I know you're ready for this, sweetie. He looks her in the eye, and his once bombastic, bombastic tone is now more soothing. You have devoted your life to our traditions, absorbing all of the lessons in earnest. You have that fire inside you, just like that fire I'm giving to you now. A fire master turns to the crowd with a gigantic grin, his voice larger than life. Do you agree, my friends? A thunder of cheers and clapping echo, the crowd fully invested in the family ritual taking place. Someone starts chanting her name, and soon enough, even Olivia and I are chanting with them. Mikela, Mikela, Mikela. Our, voice, our voices invigorate her. With a loud, triumphant whoop, Mikela takes the chains from her grandfather. The ball of flame spins once more, far more wildly as she hollers up, uproariously along with the crowd. Ah, Mikela, now go! It is your turn, to, it's your show to run now. The old dino meanders back with the rest of his family, taking up Mikrella's abandoned baton before taking a seat amongst the crowd near us. My friends, with great honor as the eighth head of the Ashtails, the other eight performers once more exhale tall pillars of flame. Let the show continue! With a graceful somersault, a new drum beat blares through the speakers, and the dancers begin to move with their flaming props. The new members move with elegance. She's clearly had a lot of practice. And that grandpa. Oh, I gotta get a picture of that. Well, this is a random side quest. Okay. Oh, hey, was that... What was that? What was what? Your smile just faltered. I saw it. In the corner of my eye. Right, in the corner of my eye. What's up? Aren't you observant? Oh, aren't you observant? I just feel for him a bit. The fire master? Why? In a way, it's kind of sad. The great Alejandro will retire, and his granddaughter will take his place. What's he going to be doing for the rest of his life? He loves his he loves this job and he just retired. He's never going to do it again. He's going to enter his twilight years and know the best is behind him. Is that what you think? That's what I worry about. Olivia looks back to the show. The newest member dances elegantly. <laughs> Performers la laugh and hoot in the square with the new leader of the troupe. Compared to her f grandfather, she's far more energetic. Her flourishes and sweeps are far faster than Alejandro's. But even still, for snippets of second, I would see some worry cross Mikuela's face. I think he's gonna die. What? When Caveman and showed the images of these dinosaurs with their tweet feed, I thought it was fan art, but then I saw these dinos in the actual game trailer and realized I'd seen them in action. Yeah, yeah, I was wondering what the heck they were posting that for. It felt so out of left field. Questioning herself, or her movement or something. The look would vanish, though, when another of the troop would pass her by, whispering something to her, or perform a duet move with her to help correct her. Taking the show now... It feels less refined compared to the first act, but also more real and vibrant. The Firemaster claps along and laughs to himself, giving a reassuring thumbs up. Olivia looks at the old man, lost in thought. Well, maybe there's a little truth there, but... I mean, look at him. Does he look sad? No, he looks like it's the best day of his life. He's really happy for his granddaughter. His granddaughter that he taught everything she knows. Everything he's learned from his father. Oh, is this supposed to relate to, to Olivia and Eidekin? Everything he's learned from his father. One day the torch was passed to him, and he upheld that legacy he inherited for years and years. He had an amazing career, and he raised her so he could trust her. And now she's ready to do all that herself. 
Again, it's a matter of trust. You don't think someone as old as he isn't able to tell? It's like an old tradition, you know? Only a poet could appoint another poet. Inko looks like a Muppet. <laughs> Things change. People change. But a talent or a craft that has to be passed down or else even the little things become impossible to do. Alejandro knew his craft well enough to perform for 25 years. And look at Miquela. She's performing just as well as he did. He knows better than us, Inko. So I don't think he's wrong for wanting to pass on his legacy. To pass on everything you know like that to someone you love. It's to grant that person their purpose. That's why he's happy. Life's full of uncertainties. To raise someone up to take your place is one of the biggest challenges. Is she going to be a teacher like in ending? Yeah, this is going to be ending three, isn't it? Where she's going to be a teacher. Bet. Moving forward with no fear of the future at all, making it e so even the apprentice can become a, a master and pass on what she knows just the same. That biggest challenge turns into a great blessing to keep going even when it burns, always moving to a final victory. And in the end, he, he won. I wiped the tear, I wiped the tear from her eye. She leans into my hand, somewhere in there. Something changed. He started referring to two people, and I wanted to tell her, but she knows. I think, I think I'm ready. Inko. Inko. I got it. You got what? I really can't explain it right now. It's more of a feeling, like a flame. We need to get back. What are you waiting for? Let's go. She inks my arm and starts burning rubber towards the direction we came from. Olivia, go where? The formal dummy. What? She races b oh, Wait, I just realized this is that song from that one post from Caveman on. Why is it playing here, though? She races back off towards the metro station before I can even finish my question. Wait. The eulogy? I take off after, and even the uneven cobblestone making catching up very difficult. As I pa as I pass the propped up sign, I stop, yanking a twenty from my wallet and dipping it in the tip box for the ash tails. The little girl standing by it beams at me with a toothy grin. You guys sure this is an ending four? I'll melt later. Can't get distracted. Where is she? Aha! I catch up to her, still speeding towards the metro station. Is there still time? It's almost nine. There's time. Wait, hold on. Let me go back. It's almost nine. There's time! We can still make it! We can make it! Should we run back to get your dress? Olivia stops and skids to face me. It's the other way. We can't. Both of our heads jerk sideways to the boutique we stopped in front of. Oh, we're gonna buy something. Our hearts skip a beat. In the distance, a familiar sound of the metro's arrival. We maybe have a minute. You got 200 bucks? Merry Christmas. Thank you, thank you, come on. Olivia drags me into the store, scanning for anything she finds acceptable. What kind of dress do you want? I don't know anything about dresses. Shit, okay, what's your favorite color? Green! The fuck do you think? Of course it is! Shut up! You know this fashion shit, you pick something. Okay, okay. Time slows as I scan the shelves, cataloging all the possible dresses in sight. There's about three green dresses on display. The lime hard bust wiggle dress looks like something I'd hurl on. And the Grande Verde classic wrap dress aged faster than the wine guzzling wench that made it. Which leaves the newer little true deep green dragon perch kimono. <laughs> yeah, g give her give her the weeb clothes. Do it, Inko. This is a little Yes, it's beautiful, I'll take it. <laughs> I toss it over so they said red was bad, white was good. So green's probably gotta be ending three, right? 
no secret you saw the trailer what she's wearing in ending three and the next dress isn't that so we're at ending four guys so the one yeah i saw the slow dance that was the white dress so wait white dress is ending four wait i meant ending four ending four okay so we're in three green is either three or two i don't know I toss it over to her and she catches it. With the dress in tow, Olivia wastes zero time and speeds right out the door with a no enough force to nearly knock me off my feet. I'll have to stop the shop owner from giving chase by hand hastily handling handing her the two Benjamins. Sorry about that. Keep the change. Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays. Olivia is still ahead, trying to put the dress on already, and still moved forward towards the metro. We're right there. Lift your tail! She understands and quickly shifts her tail into an upright position right before I grab her handles and keep rushing forward. And as the doors start closing, I muster all this, all of the strength I have in me and boost Olivia into the cabin. I manage to throw myself inside before the doors could close on my foot. I slide Olivia to the side and stop myself on the armrest of the opposing seats. I'm left breathless. Oof. Oof. Mmm. Oh. Mm. Oh. The heck are you out of breath for? It's tense. Are you alright? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. I finish catching my breath and she sits in the seat normally. Olivia moves on to her spot and keeps struggling to put her dress on. She tosses me her hoodie. How does this even work? Olivia waves the kimono around like a signal flag, confused at what goes where. Here, let me help you out. I bought a smoking jacket. Wait, I brought... I bought a smoking jacket a while back. Shouldn't be too dissimilar to wearing one of these, I think. A smoking jacket? I don't think you... I didn't think you smoke. I don't. I just thought it'd be cool to have. I help Olivia off her wheelchair and onto the metro seat, since that should make the process easier. It takes a bit of trial and effort, and a quick snoot, <laughs> quick snoot tube tutorial, where we eventually get the Naga Juban and Kimono on. Totally ace that pronunciation. After making sure that all the knots are tied securely, and her tail is poking out of the accommodating slit on the back of the dress, I help Olivia back onto her wheelchair. Oh, dang. Well, we're looking at that for a bit. What a fucking weeb. This is essentially the prom of this game. So wait, red one, white two, green... Wait, wait, I'm, I'm, who was reading? Red one, white two, green three, white with a crown and hair done is four. All right. Well, how do I look? I take a good look at Olivia in her dress. Even though this was at the last minute, she still manages to take my breath away. You look beautiful. You're just saying that. I am, and it's the truth. Oh, they even changed. They even changed the sprite. It's great. Wait. Do you still have the tickets? I reach into my back pocket and pull them out, offering her to see. She takes one and stares at it intensely in, in her hand as though it were gold. We got ending three, and it's still in the positive line, but a bit worse than the best. Well, it gives us more reason to play, so how about after this, after we claim the third ending, we'll go back and do endings one and two. I'll probably, if, you, if I could find like a guide that doesn't spoil anything. Uh, we'll do endings two, three, and then four. Sound like sound like a plan? Seven p.m. to ten p.m. She glances up at the terminal. Half past nine. We can make it. We'll be close. The speech might go over the time limit, but we can make it in the last minute. Okay. Olivia starts hi starts hyping herself. Her lips move, but no words come out. Olivia's head would occasionally bob in approval or shake in disapproval, too. 
Yeah, we're doing one and two before four, so that way four just, it hits better. There's a heavy tension building in my chest. The LED clock displays in the cartridge looks like it's going just thrice as fast. I can't tell if time's going too fast or if our train's going too slow. The whole ride, she speaks silently to herself, probably rehearsing the new speech she just pieced together. Man, I really love seeing her like this. With my phone, I check, I check Rugal for the fastest way to the convention center. We're cutting it really close, made worse by my discovery. While I don't want to disrupt her con concentration, we have to transfer lanes at the central station. Olivia is still lost in a rehearsal as I push her out of the train and race through the full railway station. I curse this building. I curse this building's layout, the second line having been built by what feels like miles away. As I try to get get us to it, at last I see it, a sign directing to where exactly the convention center tram is. Downstairs. Oh, downstairs. With a silent curse, I beeline for the nearest elevator, Olivia's wheelchair becoming an incidental plow as we push through the late night crowd. The elevator doors look positively ancient, but that doesn't matter. My full palm slaps at the button roughly as even more adrenaline pumps through my veins. Right now, I feel a sort, sort of hyper-awareness. The rest of the world is going at a snail's pace as I repeatedly jab at the button. When the door finally lurches open, I practically shove Olivia through. Startling her from her thoughts at last. Inko? We're going to make it, we're going to make it, we're going to make it. Inko! All at once I feel my energy plateau. Slumping heavily against the handlebars of Olivia's wheelchair, my body finally registers how hard I pushed it. With a gasp I'm floored completely, my lower body feeling excessively heavy as the muscles within my legs wail in pain. When the, elevator's door, when the elevator doors reopen, Olivia thankfully wheels herself out. I hang, on to the, I hang on to her handlebars while I drag my feet after her. The transfer train is there, thankfully. We're going to make it, Olivia. You said that already. Ninko, are you alright? She peers back at me over her shoulder. I simply smile and wipe the sweat from my brow with my sleeve. Getting aboard the new train, I allow myself to collapse on the seat by Olivia. Olivia keeps looking at me with her moonshade silver eyes filled with worry. My only response is a tired smile and a thumbs up. The second metro line goes just as fast as the first. 9.45. I don't dare interrupt Olivia here. She continues mashing all the right pieces together in her head. It's not just a speech. It's an all-new part of her that's suddenly awakened to. Inko. I glance, I glance over. She offers a hand and I take it. I'm so happy you're here. Thank you. I gently grasp her hands for the rest of the metro ride. Eventually, we pull into the station. We're here. 9.57. It's right outside, a straight shot to the front door. The doors open, and a few couples start exiting. That's fine, people leave these things early all the time. A tinge of fear mars Olivia's face. I give her a reassuring smile and start pushing her out, past the inflow. The convention center is just up ahead, covered in what must be hundreds of feet worth of sparkly, sparkling fairy lights. A ten-foot-tall Christmas tree stands near the entrance, topped with a star that pierces the night sky. I turn the corner into the parking lot and... A chatter of milling couples entering cars or walking past us to the metro. My pace slows to a walk. We can't have been that late, could we? There should be a few minutes to spare. There should be. As more couples trickle out the door, a tired figure stands at the door. It's Ben, with his extremely short tie. He's holding the door for a few more couples. I stop in front of him. When he notices us, when he notices us he stops and stares. Ben, what? What are you two doing here? It's over. Go home. We need to do cleanup. 
What's the formal? It ends at 10. Ben raises an eyebrow. Everyone should still be in there. We're just getting ready to leave. I peek past Ben. The place is nearly empty. We need we needed to be out by ten. It's two minutes past. No, no, no. Look, Ben, it, it took some time, but trust me, we got it. We can call everyone back. Use a speaker, something. Just let Olivia do her last minute speech. A last minute speech. Are you fucking kidding me? Olivia, you made a commitment. And you failed. Again. Like always, you throw this pity party for yourself and someone else has to pick up your slack. You couldn't even drop the act for Eidekin. Well then, Olivia, you won. You abandoned Eidekin so you can run away with your boyfriend and pretend nothing ever happened. Congrats. All fists are gonna fly here. Dude, holy shit. What the fuck is wrong with you? I get up in his face. Olivia tugs softly on my sleeve to pull me back. He sighs. I'm not getting worked up over this. You got a speech? Okay, let me hear it. I'll be your audience, hmm? No. Thrilling. I move to tears. Ben, what has gotten into you? Nothing. Just leave me be for the night, okay? And Olivia. Stop looking at me like that. Takes a step back and lets the door close. I feel Olivia's constant tugging on my sleeve. A deep exhale is not worth it. The walk back to the metro is silent. From us, at least. The chatter from the couples around us is lively. Tales of a night well spent on how fun it was. Impromptu plans being made to visit each other's places for the night. But Olivia's just left out of it. She was so excited before. It's like someone clipped her wings. Someone. I'm not letting, the, I'm not letting that guy live this down. <clears throat> Heavy gloom hangs above Olivia's head, sitting silently in the empty car with her. Any previous words I had to help are simply gone. Instead, I lean closer to her, my hand finding one of hers that's balled up tightly in her dress. My fingers softly unwrap hers, carefully disentangling them from the soft cloth in her grip. Her, held her head tilts upright, just enough that I can see the fresh tears trailing down her cheeks. Once more, I take her face in my other hand, my thumb wiping away one track of her tears from her. A sorrowful smile spreads across her lips, small and feeble and on the verge of breaking. Rising from the seat is just enough. I bring myself closer to Olivia. The hug is awkward and shaky from the rocking of the train car, but I can't but I keep a tight hold of her, cradling, cradling her head against my chest. Olivia's tears soak into my suit jacket, already ruined from our failed attempt to get to the formal. I couldn't care less f for the damn thing, though. All that matters right now is being here for Olivia. My front door opens easily enough as I slowly wheel Olivia into my home. I don't know who's more tired, but I know for a fact that I'm needed of a change of clothes. Olivia? She simply responds with a non-committal grunt. I uh, need to get a change out of this. Another grunt. With a gentle sigh, I set Olivia's hoodie on her lap. I'll take you to the guest room so you can change too, okay? A third grunt, but with a nod. After I bring the girl to the guest room on the ground floor, I scale the stairs slowly. Once away from Olivia, I finally feel the full weight of my exertions tonight. My arms feel leaden, my, waves, my legs a wobbly jelly. The want to just collapse and sleep, on, sleep drop violently on my shoulders. Anyways, I gotta go now. I wanna get, don't want to get spoiled too much on the bittersweet ending. Take care, Pork, and everyone. Until next time. All right. All right, Nario. Have a good night. We're, we're still going to do a uh, post stream after this, though.
but I find the strength to haul myself into my room. It's a struggle to remove the sweat-soaked cloth from my body. Removing the undershirt has almost made me slam my slam face first into my wall. Pinko? What? Ow. Cold. The cool hard wood of my floor feels amazing on my scalding hot back, even if my tailbone feels bruised. Olivia is kneeling on my doorway, back in her usual hoodie. Seeing her concerned look seeing her concerned look helps to dull the pain. I'm fine. Good. She shuffles further into my room, her eyes roving over my walls thoroughly. I consider standing, but my legs could use some reprieve. So I simply reach up for the clean shirt I set aside and set aside and slide it on swiftly. Nice room. Thanks. My knees ache terribly as I shuffle after Olivia, uncaring on how it may ruin my dress slacks. Olivia plants herself at the foot of my bed, and I take the spot right next to her. Her hand finds mine immediately, and her head lands on my shoulder. We simply sit and relax like that. The stress from it all oozes off of me, and Olivia nuzzles against me. It's an odd sort of silent serenity that settles on us. As much as I don't like how Ben, I can't really blame the guy. I don't know. I think Ben needs a little bit more compassion. <clears throat> no sound at all except for how breathing, each puff of air taking it with more and more of our worldly troubles. Minko. Her voice is soft and steady. I'm sorry. About tonight. It's all my fault. I lean my head against her, hers and shake it in rejection of your statement. It's fine, Olivia. I don't blame you for anything Ben said. But if I had realized sooner, I shake my head again. What matters is you figured it out. And I'm sure that Mr. Eidekin, her breathing hitches at his name. I mean, you understand what's important. Yeah? Her head bobs in agreement press her head bobs of agreement presses her silky head hair against my cheek. What matters now is that we're together and enjoying the rest of the night, okay? She bobs her head again and I can feel her anxious sigh escape her. So, what do you want to do? You could watch movies, or maybe I could show you some photos or Inko. I pause to hear what she wants. I just like to stay here. With you. Of course. Another pause. But, uh... What is it? Just name it, Olivia, and I'll do my best. Well, could you turn the lights off? The lights? Those lights? The ones with the switch all the way back at my doorway? My legs are practically cinder blocks now with how heavy they feel. But if it's what she wants... Well, of course. Sheer brutal agony lances through my sore legs. But I managed to get to my feet. I swear I hear snickering as I slowly shuffle to the light switch. Must be my imagination. Once I manage to get to the wall, it's a simple matter to flick the switch off and douse my room in an evening darkness. There's a gasp from Olivia, and I can just imagine a turn without and I can just manage a turn without collapsing on myself. Olivia? The stars ain't go stars and the dim moonlight flickering in into my room i can see olivia's head turned towards my window huh i wonder they made suburbs out here i guess olivia sh olivia shifts back to her knees and moves to my window wow you like stargazing my dad used to take me out the nebulas i saw back then those colors they always stuck with me, swirling around in my thoughts. Managing the steps needed to reach the window, I stand next to Olivia and look through the window. It's a clear night, and with the moon only a quarter waning. I've never considered it, but these new suburbs don't have too much light pollution. Unlike Olivia's neighborhood. How long has it been since she's seen a night sky like this? My legs finally reach their tippy, tipping point, and I find myself collapsing into my desk chair. When my arm lands on my desk, my hand lands on something. 
That's my camera. Hmm. See Olivia. Huh? Would you like a better view? Of the sky here. I find my tripod and search my desk for my biggest camera lens. After some practice set up, the camera is pointed right out my window, aimed at the cosmos above. Dang, we hit 90. That's crazy. And then the whole thing is connected to my computer. Presto, our very own observatory. The screen fills with a beautiful high-definition feed from the camera. I slide in the computer chair to show Olivia. Whoa. Want to come see? I move to get out of the chair so she can have a turn. But in a flash of movement betraying her tired exterior, Olivia forced herself into the chair right on my legs. Feeling her weight press, in press into me is... nice. It's really nice. I carefully aim the tripod bit by bit, aiming at various sights in the sky. We see a distant nebula swirling around in blue and purple. It's only barely visible, but it's there. I should paint something like this sometime. I bet it'd be really pretty. I don't think I could do it justice. You don't think so? I'd like to see you give it a shot. I catch something in the stream just for a second. Hold it. Slowly, now. I know I just saw something. Whoa. Is that... I think it is. A shooting star up close for us to see. Nobody else in the city gets to see this. You want to make a wish? Olivia thinks to herself and turns her head to look at me. You saw it first. Are those the rules? Alright. A wish. Okay, think fast. I wish things would turn out- will turn out okay. That sounds good. For some reason, I always think you're supposed to pray a bit when you do this. Whoops. I look away from the monitor and smile at Olivia. So? Mm, I don't want to tell you. Besides, I think it's already coming true. Olivia rolled her eyes, though the screen lit up at- the screen lit up her smile too. Drilling her snuggle further into me, we continue looking at the celestial bodies that hung over us. My arms wrapped around her midriff, holding her as close as possible. It's how we spent the night together. Just us and the stars and nothing else of the world. The purr, the purr reverberating from Olivia and through my chest slowly soothed us both to sleep. Yes, that wish is coming true. No picture. A month has passed since that night. I held Olivia. She held me. And things were okay. Just for a while. After everything she's been through, Olivia needed something to help lift the burdening weight from her shoulders. Thankfully, the next day marked the beginning of winter break, and we ended up spending most of it together. Most of the time it was just hanging out at each other's houses, watching shows and playing games. She even taught me how to get guts to perform tricks. Almost 100. Yeah, Bacon. Sorry for not being earlier. No, no, if, if you're at a party, enjoy your party, Bacon. You have no obligation to be here. Don't, don't feel obligated. Enjoy your party. <laughs> no, he's not trying to get bricked up. Oh my god, come on, man. Have some class. It was simplistic, but these intimate moments with her were memories I'll cherish for as long as I live. I even got to spend Christmas and New Year's with her and the Payne family. It was the closest thing of having a real family I've experienced in years. In those two weeks, I'll never, I've never felt more connected to Olivia. Time marches on, though, and college or summer vacation and all that. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. The future draws closer day by day. The first semester en ended last week, and this week, along with the new syllabuses for the semester, we've also been given our college prep packets, along with a number of different application forms. There's so many that my cramped backpack can't fit them. 
No reaching 100 with this one, I hope. I'm going to have to take a picture when I see that. No one's ever going to believe me. Looking through the varying sheets, I feel confident in most of my choices. Most of which are within the city. And I hope... Oh, here's my stop. Holding the two overfilled folders to my chest, I make my exit and head for my usual destination. Finding the numerous papers in my arms, I gently push the door open to the pain residence. And it's open. I know, Randy. Thanks. The head of the house and Vinny are at the dining room table, working on his homework together. Hey, Inky, Livy's in her room. Vinny, stay focused. Thanks, Vinny. I ruffle the little dino's hair as I pass him by. 98. We're getting close. Pushing through my girlfriend's bedroom door, I come to see her. Oh, look at me. It's perfectly fine for me to ignore your iframes and one-shot you with some bullshit oversized turd-looking sword. Raging once again at one of her laptop games. If it makes you angry, why don't you switch to another game? No, I'm almost enjoying my anger. She snorts and shuts the game off, twisting around so I can hug her on her bed. Hey, Inko. Hey. Olivia sweeps her laptop aside to give me room. I allow my backpack to drop to the floor and set one of the overpacked folders on Olivia's lap. She groans and flops backwards. Come on, Inko, it's Friday. It's Thursday, actually. That isn't... That isn't coursework, though. Olivia sits back up and checks the folder. Three left. Yeah, I see a 97. Then what is... Oh, these. Leaning over, I pull out her actual classwork from my backpack and set the sheets on her lap. And that's really starting to pile up. It's a bit of work getting your teachers to pass the stuff along to me. It's probably a week's worth of stuff this time. Ruby. Do we really need to? Yes. Come on, I know most of the stuff, so it will be a cinch. Oh, excuse me. I get the first assignment out and use a binder as a clipboard. Ready to start, the first assignment was just some busy work with crossword puzzles involving state capitals. While Olivia lazily drags her mechanical pencil across the page, filling it out, I bring it up. I miss you. At school. It's not the same without you around. School's been back in session for nearly a month now. At first, e Olivia was eager to return. Then she just skipped a day. Then two days in a week. The entire last week, she's just been absent. Ever since that night, she's just lost more and more motivation to graduate. It's the least I can do to try to stop it. I'm willing to help her here. Damien and Liz miss you too. Sorry, I'll probably go tomorrow. Probably? Olivia, I'm worried for you. You're right at the finish line. It scares me seeing you get senioritis like this. It's not senioritis. Well, it sort of is. She does a little hand gesture and sighs. I just don't see the point. Nothing I'm going to do benefits from a high school diploma. Right? I don't think that's true. You can't be too sure of anything. Olivia blows air out her nose. I place a hand on Olivia's shoulder. Please, Olivia, just do this for me. She stares back, a twinge of fear in her eyes. Alright. Just for you, I'll consider it. Thanks. We keep working away at the pile of assignments. A few papers in, Olivia thinks to boot up her laptop to play some ambient metal for <laughs> ambient metal for us. She occasionally asks my opinion on a song, self-conscious if I like it or not. At a point, Mr. Payne lets us know he's heading out for some errands. This is pretty nice, getting to teach Olivia what she missed in our classes and keeping her up to speed. Dare I say, the schoolwork is even relaxing. Less so the busy work, more so that we're together. About halfway in, and an hour later, there's a loud knock at the door. 
That doesn't sound like anyone's here's knock. You can tell? Yeah. Could it be a package delivery? I'll go get it then. I give Olivia's shoulder a little rub while I get up. She tries nipping at my sleeve. It's still pretty cold out, so I shouldn't take too long to get it. If it's a package, it may be something that's not good to leave out. Watch it be Ben or something. I open the door. Yeah, I knew it. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Hey, Inko. Instantly, my enthusiasm is drained. What is it? He's starting to shiver in the freezing. He's starting to shiver in the free... Wait. He's starting to shiver in the freezing, huddling to himself. Look, Inko, can I come in for a moment? No. What do you want? He sighs. Listen, I know things didn't go well when we last talked. We didn't leave on good terms. I'm here because of Olivia. Why is she not coming to school? <laughs> Why do you think she's not coming to school, you fucking egghead? None of your business. She needs to keep her grades up. I feel my lips instinctively curl my expression into a grimace. What? Fuck off, dude. No, this is serious. Why the hell do you think this is something you need to be involved with? I'm working on it. Are you? She's about to lose her eligibility for graduation. She's going to flunk out. My fingers ding into the wood of the doorway. I figured, but she hasn't missed that many. Olivia's completed all the assignments in. How close. Dangerously close. Close enough that I got the memo. What do I do then? We need to convince her to go back. Some people keep letting her get away with it by handling, handing her pity points, but there should be no excuse when the situation is this dire. What do you mean by some people? Inko, it's obvious that you're only encouraging her to fall further into the abyss. If you keep enabling her to slack off, she's never going to improve. You have to know on some level, I know you know I'm right. So if you're not going to do anything about it in a mean meaningful way, then I'll tell her myself. Ben has the audacity to try to walk past me, but I shut him down with a firm hand to his chest. Why can't you get the idea, Ben? Olivia wants nothing to do with you. I'm trying to do what's best for her. Ben starts yelling at the top, near the top of his lungs. Olivia, please just hear me out. I'm trying to help you. Ben, stop. Just let me talk to you. Stop. Just stay away from us before you make things even worse. Ben stands there, unable to form any more words. For a while, I can't either. You psycho. Outside Olivia's room, I dreaded turning the doorknob. If I'm lucky, she just cranked up the music that whole time and thinks that what was just a delivery. It's a nice little fantasy. Oh dang, a hundred! I gotta, I gotta screen cap that. I'm, I'm putting it in paint. Hold on. There we go. Save, save that little fucker. Put that up on my fridge or something. <laughs> there we go. Congratulations to me. <laughs> okay, enough tooting my own horn. I know better than that, though. The music's already turned off. She turned it down when I opened the door. I sigh and open up. Olivia's huddled on the bed, holding her knees tight. All my work is crumpled and torn, cast aside off her bed. Damn it. I was close. Olivia. Sorry. I can't. I ignore the sound of the paper being crushed beneath my foot. My arm slowly wraps around Olivia, drawing her to my chest in a gentle hug. Through the, her wobbling gasps of breath, she whimpers a mantra of apologies. Thanks for the congrats, guys. <laughs> Let's aim for 200. Yeah, that's not happening. We were so close. 
I think. Fighting back a frustrated Grell, I instead focus entirely on comforting Olivia. Or managing, at least. They would have been the day. But Ben... You know, Ben, that could have been a fucking text. But whatever. With a cleaning shake of a clearing shake of my head, I returned my attention to Olivia, who has finally quieted down. Olivia. Her arms hold her legs more tightly. It will be fine, Olivia. Her arm eases. We'll figure things out. I promise we'll th figure these figure things out. The rest of the school year is a blur to me. Days turn into weeks. Weeks turn into months. Didn't even hit me that I was graduating until the day finally came. Being handed my diploma, shaking Scaler's hand, felt almost surreal. It was the moment that I had been anticipating the entire year, and I finally achieved it. Although it didn't feel quite as fulfilling knowing Olivia was sitting with the audience rather than beside me. Regardless, I don't have time to dwell on the past. I need to worry about our future, and that means supporting her. I didn't even bother to check where the acceptance letter had come from, only that it was still here in Volcadera. It was simply a matter of going through the motions, filling the schedule, taking, talking with the counselors, and choosing whatever programs. The content didn't matter, just needed to get somewhere, for both of us. The late March rain patters on my windshield. Pollen is going to start being a problem soon. Man, I can't wait to just relax. Today sucked. Between the yelling and almost getting hit by a car, all the running everywhere. Blaze is getting three viewers. You're, why are you getting 98? Because this is a game everyone wants. I'm exhausted. I think of Olivia and yeah, it's all worth it. Can't wait to get back home. Spring break finally rolled around. All my coursework is fin finished and submitted just in time. I even had the time to compose cor cordial well wishes to all my professors. That leaves all my responsibilities ticked off my mental bucket list. The next two weeks are completely open for the two of us to enjoy. It's been a while since we were able to go out somewhere. Maybe I should plan something romantic. Maybe something to get... Maybe something to get some real fresh air and take advantage of the weather before I end up congested. Like camping. That'd be a lot of fun. I entertain myself with these thoughts the rest of the way home. Oh, we're at 103 now. Damn. The lo-fi hip-hop station currently playing helped a lot, too. Olivia's recently gotten into it and wanted, to, wanted me to give it a listen. Gotta say, it's pretty good. Finally, I arrive at my flat. It's a smaller, cozy place. Not that I can afford something more luxurious. It's just something that spoke to Olivia and I. I shift the car into park and pull the key from the ignition. Sighing in relief. He's got a car now, guys! A small staircase later, and I'm at the front door. Unlocking it quickly and stepping inside. It's quiet, as usual. Olivia's usually working around this time, too. I quietly push her door open. <laughs> a little too dark, though. Come on, you gotta open up the windows just a little bit. You can see the bags under her eyes. Poor girl. sat quietly in front of her drawing tablet, carefully painting a dramatic landscape. The colors of the digital screen shine off her, of her visage, tinting her gentle smile with all sorts of exotic colors. I caught her at a good time. She looks stunning. Seeing her art at work, combined with the ambient lighting in the room, is a painting all on its own. When she sees me in the corner... When she sees me, the corners of her mouth pick up, and I see a bit of that sparkle in her eye. She waves to me, and the mouth lets out a silent message. I made club sandwiches. Yours is in the fridge. I return a thumbs up. 
I'll be out in a bit. Let me wrap up here. Gently, I shut the door to not make a sound. Could have been way worse, but at least it's ending three. Sorry about that, guys. I'll need to start wrapping up soon, so... Oh, is she doing a lot? Is she doing a live stream? <laughs> That's adorable. Gain donations. Like, she didn't graduate, so now she's, like, living... Living as an artistic streamer. I approve. Oh god, a cramped a little cramped a really cramped kitchen space. Our kitchen gets a decent amount of use, but it's kept pretty tidy. Every now and then every now and again when I see some culinary doodad, I'll pick it up for Olivia. I open the fridge. Inside is a leftover pizza box, a half gallon of milk, a stray can of soda, and some dwindling bags of fruit. Art streamer, let's go. <laughs> I guess Olivia used the last of our actual food for lunch. I'll need to go shopping soon. And of course, the sandwich Olivia made wrapped up all fancy for me. There's even an olive spike through the top with a toothpick. Looks good. I grabbed a soda and shut the door. Ordinarily, I'd sit at the table, but the couch is too inviting for to my sore back. Olivia should be done with her stream soon. Maybe I should rent a movie or something. Before I take the first bite of the sandwich, the bedroom door creaks open. In the corner of my eye, I watch as my girlfriend tries to s surreptitiously sneak towards me on hands and knees. While she has the miniature gator skin bag be bags beneath her eyes, I can clearly see the mischievous glimmer in her mirror-like irises. Pretending not to notice her, I chew on the delicious sandwich meat until I feel a sharp tug on my wrist. Her jaw is wrapped around it, gently nomming on my limb. She lets go. She lets go once I look at her, and I keep my hand held out so she can take it. When she does. Once she does, it's a simple matter of drawing her up onto the couch beside me. The glasses stay on. She sniffs the air and follows the smell to my club, which she also nips at. Hey, give me some. One bite. Ah, uh, one human bite. <laughs> she crunches off the other end and I follow up with my next bite. It's good. Olivia's cooking's always been wonderful. She's definitely upset about something. Hey, something got you down? Hmm? You seem low energy. Nah, don't worry about it. Just some heckler when I was wrapping up the stream. Yeah, you hear that, guys? No hecklers. Don't worry about it. How was your day? Oh man, it was nuts. I barely had time to finish my last assignment to avoid homework. Like all the other students were in a rush too. And there was this some then there was some stupid bug with the submission website. Really exhausting day. And some prick nearly rear-ended me with his pickup. Ugh. But I did get my schedule cleared. The spring break is all ours. Ah, nice. How was your day? Oh, I, uh, just streamed. All day? Nice. Have you reached 5,000 followers? Yeah, I did. Damn, she's, she's out playing me now. God damn, I gotta step up my game. That's nice. Hopefully her career really takes off soon. Truthfully, I worry for her a bit. Oh, yeah. I was thinking we could arrange a day at day out sometime. Go on a little vacation during the break. Oh, yeah? Yeah, does that sound like fun? Hmm. Come on, we need to get out more. I went out last week. Okay, I get your point. Yeah, it sounds fun. Where would you want to go? Um, a park, maybe? I still don't know what's around here. I think there's a few public parks around. It'll be like when we saw the bluffs. Oh, you know what? We haven't ever gone back to Volcadera. We live in Volcadera, you dork. Well, I meant the city. We should go check it out. 
I bet the Pains would love to have us over. Olivia flinches, of course. It's gonna be it's gonna be ending three where she doesn't like talk to any of her friends or anything. I hate that. What do you say? A little trip down memory lane? Come on, it's only been a year. I think it'd be fun to feel the coastal breeze again. Not yet. Hmm? Olivia fidgets. I don't want the pains to see me yet. Why not? When I left, I didn't leave on the best of forms. I could tell they were unsure if I'd ever make something of myself and make things work for me. Heck, I wanted to prove I wanted to prove I could before I left. And now it's been a whole year, and what do I have to show? I don't even make enough to cover my share of rent. Olivia. My hand lays on top of hers and curls over her fingers. Would Randy or Sophia care? Well, come on, we both know they'd love to see you again. Her fidgeting eases and a smile slowly creeps on her lips. Yeah, I guess. I'll shoot them a text later, okay? She looks up and nods happily. After, no, no alarm, shut up. <laughs> After that then, I don't know. How about camping? I can look into local campsites. That sounds nice, yeah. Alright. Hey, you up for a movie or something? She nods. Using the remote, I browse for something decent. Oh, they added a bunch of old kaiju movies. Nice. We finally settle, for, settle in for a night of cheesy rubber suit monster movies. At some point, Olivia's tail had wrapped around my waist. Come on, give us a picture, caveman on. And bodily dragged me to her. Slowly, the sun fades down, leaving us only illuminated by the television screen. I'm sorry, Inko. For what? Well, my arm wrapped around her shoulder. My arms, my arm wrapped around her shoulders, pull her as close as possible. For everything. With a, with a derisive snort, I shake my head. You haven't done anything to be sorry for, Olivia. Exactly, I've done nothing. Even in the duskiness of the room, I can see her hurt-filled eyes. I plant the most chest of kisses on her nose, electing a giggle from her. I wouldn't say that. You've done so much more than you know. For me, for me, goes unsaid. But Olivia gets the message, and her head sinks into my chest. It's a bit difficult to pull my, my, to pull my phone out with Olivia's tail in the way, but I manage. I still got the broken phone. That's Mrs. Payne. Sophia, would you like to have lunch or something tomorrow? Bro could have Bro could afford a, an apartment but not a new phone. What what are what are the times we live in? I'm confused on how the stream is getting more viewers than the stream when this game came out. I don't know, people are getting invested and we're getting close to the ending. <clears throat> what are you doing? Sending that text. Oh, absolutely, sweetie. We haven't even heard a thing from either of you for so long. Oh, is that a picture of uh, Vinny that she has there? It looks like someone trying to hold a game controller, so I'm assuming that's uh, Vinny growing up. Why don't we get brunch? How would brunch with the pain sound, Liv? Okay. It's been a while since I had Auntie's waffles, after all. Brunch sounds good. Wonderful. Remember, B-R-U-N-C-H. I accept the automated schedule updates on my phone and let it drop into the couch cushion. I return to our movie marathon. I always love seeing the old cinematography tricks in action, and Olivia's enjoying the cheesy battles. Well, we are both enjoying that part. It's made even better after I order a pizza. At some point, Olivia falls asleep leaning against me. I find it hard to stay awake too. Oh, 
The morning sun greets us as we exit the flat together. I'm going to take a quick bathroom break, guys. And we'll be here. Let me throw up the BRB and then I'll mute myself and I'll be right back. Need me a gator girlfriend. <laughs> oh boy, I get back to this, some weird stuff. Bye guys. Alright, Maria. Have a good night. Thanks for joining in. Alright. Gotta get in a comfy position and we can start. The morning sun greets us as we exit the flat together. I take the moment to bask in its warmth, breathing deeply the crisping spring air. The crisp spring air. That's you! Excuse you, Winko. My hand is quick to rub my nose clear of any pollen. Sorry, Liv. Anyways, where are we heading first? Olivia ponders as she wheels herself to the car. I heard something about waffles. Now I want Waffle House. <clears throat> She sways idly in her chair, really considering where we'd spend the morning. Finally, she speaks up when I hold the door open for her. Well, Auntie Soph said it'd be a brunch. We've got a couple of hours. Olivia climbs into the passenger seat, carefully as I hold her wheelchair for her. It's become second nature at this point to collapse the chair and store it safely in the back seat. And you know we're looking at that. I, uh, kind of wanted to take a trip down memory lane. Memory lane. Got it. Got the directions? Now in the driver's seat, Olivia has her phone out and connected to the car's older, uh, older radio. The old financial district first, then. With a nod, I shift the car into reverse and carefully back out of our parking space. Once we're on the road proper, Olivia sets the tone for a trip. The song is fast and upbeat. It's her theme, guys! And with just a hint of Pachinese, glancing at her, I see that she's checked out completely, her eyes cast on the passing view through her window. She won't be for too long, thankfully, since getting back home is easy if you know which back roads to take. As we pass through the congest congested section of downtown, Olivia lowers the music and speaks up. Enko. I turn to her and see she to see her face pressed to the window. What is it? That building. 
The one right there. Looking to where she's pointing, I see an older building that's vaguely familiar. After I squint after I squint at it for lay too long, Olivia supplies the answer. It's the old arcade. Her voice is low. Taking a closer look at the building, I finally realize why I couldn't recognize it. The paint looks fresh, and there's a different sign above it. Oh, this must have been bought by someone. Uh-oh. Yeah. Do you want to check it out? We got the whole day after all. With the heavy traffic on the main road, Olivia has some time to consider deeply. Finally, she sighs and shakes her head. It's too early anyway. In fact, I think it's too early for Old Town, too. I doubt anything in anything interesting will be open. Oh. Well, any other places you want to see, then? I... The light ahead finally changes as we start down the street again. But Olivia's eyes has never, never leave the old arcade building. I want to marry that gator. Oh, you got like 87 other chat members to fight, fight for that. <laughs> Including me. <laughs> it's when even I can't even, it's when even I can't see from the rear view window that Olivia decides. I'd like to see the bluff, the bluffs actually. It might look nice early in the morning. That is a bit more of a drive. A totally different direction. But, sounds good. Turning the steer wheel, steering wheel to the side, the car starts down another side road towards the highway. Are you excited to go hiking again? Hiking? I mean, we don't have to walk the entire thing, do we? I just figured it'd be nice to do it again. I suppress the word exercise from my mind. It'd be nice to recreate our first real date. Yeah, yeah, it would. Silence washes over the car as we both silently reminisce a, on our visit a year ago. It seems like so long ago now, even though it's just been a year. As I slow to a crawl in response to the silver SUV cutting me off, <laughs> Olivia begins tapping on my arm furiously. Inko, look! Huh? She points at something out my window. I shift my gaze to follow. To our left lies the old high school... To the left lies our old high school, St. Hannon. Oh wow, I didn't even recognize where we were. Ken, can we stop and visit? It's a Saturday. It might still be open. There's clubs on Saturday. There are some cars left in the parking lot. However, seeing Olivia become so adamant about wanting to check out the school, even after all that's ha out, even after everything that's happened last year, a part of me hopes that Olivia has finally found her missing resolve. Let's give it a shot then. I engage in some questionably legal driving maneuver maneuvers to get us in the left lane. And I take us right into the school's parking lot. The place is still pretty empty, so we were able to park real close to the front front entrance. Although we'd get prime parking anyways due to the fancy sticker I got. Uh oh. Uh oh. Got we got we got the little placard for Olivia. <laughs> I quickly look around for a place to park, pulling to the side of the road and turning the vehicle off. I step out of the car and make for the trunk to set up Olivia's wheelchair. Guys, my parents allow me to skip bedtime. <laughs> oh boy. It doesn't take long before we're, we're taking the short walk up the path. The mural is beautiful as ever, looming over us the second, like a sacred guardian of the school. There are lights on the inside. Olivia hesitates, hovering her hand just above the door handle. She pushes in, and the cool air-conditioned breeze is let out, along with a very fam familiar scent of the facility. God, I'm just butchering words left and right. <laughs> Inside, it looks like it looks just like how we left it. Is it really okay for us to be here? Olivia glances around nervously and shrugs. I don't know why we wouldn't. 
Well, normally students are supposed to call ahead or wait for a reunion. Olivia jumps. Miss Scaler. Hello, you two. It brings you back to St. Hammond. Oh, well, it's spring break for me, so we wanted to take the day and just, uh, go around. I see, Mr. No- Inko. And you're on break too, Olivia? Their silver, their silver eyes cast downwards for a moment. Olivia? I'm... Yeah, I'm on break too, Miss Scaler. The older woman's gaze shifts, shifts between Olivia and I. Wait, what? We don't talk about goodbye, Volcano High Rosa. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Let's, let's not. <laughs> I see. Well, then. With a sigh, the principal turns and starts heading down the hall. Come on, you two need a visitor pa visitor's pass, then. Olivia doesn't budge. Olivia? Don't think she heard me. Taking Olivia's handlebars, I move to catch up with Miss Scaler. Everything looks just like I remember it. The hallways, the lockers, even some of the posters. The principal smiles wryly. It's only been... It's only been a year, Inko. Give it some time, at least. What do you mean? We turn and enter a hallway that's permanently ingrained in my memories. It's the gala. Yep. Well, the district's currently looking for a proposal we submitted. Hopefully St. Hammond will have a brand new wing in the coming years. Oh, for more classrooms, then? Something like that. The, ad the administration felt that we should have a dedicated area for extracurricular classes. St. Hammond's was always focused on the arts, so that means... It's an art wing? She nods and enters her office. After a moment, she comes back with a clipboard and some large name, t and large name tapes. For now, just sign this. Don't worry about dis disturbing any clubs today. There's only the tabletop cl game club in the library. Fill out the sheet. Oh, is it, is it going to be Legends and Lore in there? Are they going to make that joke? <laughs> I fill out the sheet for both Olivia and I and hand, and hand the clipboard back. Before Miss Scaler returns to her office, though, she kneels before Olivia. And Miss Halford? The voice surprises Olivia and her head tilts back up to look at the principal. Yes? I hope this break helps with whatever's on your mind. You may not be an official alumni, but you are a former student of St. Hammond. Before Olivia can respond, Miss Scaler stands upright and re-enters her office. So she did drop out. No, no actual graduation. So what now? Olivia glances down to the, down the halls to her left and right. No, do not spam. Don't spam. I want to sit at my old spot, at Ikeden's class. Olivia lets go of my wrist with her tail and starts moving herself along. I follow closely behind, remaining silent so I don't break her focus. It's clear that there's a lot of emotions whirling through her. She looks up at the staircase and then continues to the elevator around the corner. Oh, I didn't think this far ahead. She don't have the key no more. We don't got the key, do we? Unless you made a copy. If you need, I can carry you up. Olivia reaches into her chair pocket and pulls it out. She still had it. The elevator door slides open like it's always has for us. Oh, you mean spamming on the, the reactions. Okay, I don't, rem I don't mind the reactions. Just don't spam chat. Unless something amazing happens. Another bout of nostalgia waves over me. Of all the times Olivia and I wrote it, one memory, one memory stands out, though. Both of us huddled together in fear, and... The door opens. I breathe in the fresh air outside again. I always loved the open hallway up here. Olivia rolls her head past the rooms. 231, 232, 233. 234. Olivia stares at the nameplate. Someone new, isn't it? Now it reads Miss Fizzer. Frizzer. Miss Frizzer. She sighs. 
After a moment, I reach ahead and open the door for her. Watch, the, the new teacher's going to be there. Inside is pretty similar. There's obviously some new decorations. The teacher's desk has a different clutter of papers on it. But it's the same classroom. Olivia rolls inside. I watch her carefully move the chair by her old desk so she can use it. It's still... Should I enter? After a moment, she glances at me. And pats the desk next, next to hers. I've been granted entry. I take my seat, bits and pieces of my second day here surface within my mind. It's still here. Olivia's finger is tracing something. It's a little indent in her, word de in her wooden desk. The one she used as an inkwell. How could you ever get away with doing that? The teacher was cool with it. She smiles. We both stare ahead to the front of the classroom. It's like the two of us showed up early for the day. In any minute now, an energetic Taro will waltz in, dramatically flapping his wings. There to take us on another learning adventure. Ready to give it... A, it sorry, I bumped the mic. <laughs> Ready to give it his all to teach us the values of art and craft. Olivia doesn't cry. Her fingers weakly tap against the desk. But she doesn't cry. After a while, she speaks up. You ready? Are you? She looks over with a slight smile. Yeah. I get up and push our chairs back into the original spots. Leaving, I turn around for one last look. I know Olivia is as well. It's probably really the last time. I gently shut the door behind us. Bye. We ended up taking our short tour of the rest of the school. Seeing the sights of one more. The auditorium, the atrium, even the cafeteria. I got us some of our old favorites from the vending machine. On the way out, we passed through the gala once more. I wonder. I stop at the trophy case. Olivia hears my footsteps. Olivia hears my footsteps have stopped and turns. Her landscape is gone. In its place, a plaque. Oh, God. That's gotta suck. Oh, wait, it's gonna, it's gonna be Idakin there is, instead, isn't it? <clears throat> Olivia gently rolls up to the glass case. I step aside for her. It holds an etched stone slab and several photogra photographs illuminated, illuminated by dim yellow lights. Surrounded by all the award-winning works of art by his students. And etched into the top of the polished stone lies his name in embossed in gold leaf. Mr. Trent Eidekin. 201M1986. 201M2023 BC. Dang, he's not as mu he's not that much older than me. How damn he died really young. That is nuts. Olivia's hands clasp over her mouth. Olivia, are you? She shakes her head and lets her hands drop to her lap. Inko. Olivia rolls back to the front of to the front office. Inside, Principal Scaler looks up from the sheet she was filling out. Ah, done with your sightseeing already? Though her tone is shaky, Olivia smiles and nods. Okay, don't do that. I'm gonna have to tell. No. Okay. Hold on. You're getting muted. I told you no. Hold on. That's why I need mods. <laughs> Okay, come on, chat. I can't do it from OBS because OBS is busted. I'm pretty sure OBS. Yeah, OBS is busted. Come on. 
Yes, we've. this is the third time we've been at 100. We don't need to spam it. If this thing would boot up any faster. My god. Oh, there we go. Jesus. I was about ready to go to the Gilded. Okay, you're getting in timeout. Ten minutes. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I told you like three different times we do not spam the chat unless like something super amazing happened. And we've been into the hundred like three times, so it's nothing. It's not a big deal. Ah, <gasps> I'm sorry, but I made myself clear. <laughs> and you're ruin you're ruining the atmosphere here. You're ruining it for the chatters, dude. It's not cool. I'm sorry, guys. Anyways. Miss Scaler, I... Olivia wheels to her desk. I share a look, though I can't see what Olivia's doing from the entryway. But the principal, I see her face fall into a saddened frown. They're whispering, and Miss Scaler's eyes are even getting misty. She wipes her face and nod, and nods, taking a blank sheet from her desk and writing on it. Olivia accepts the paper. Thank you, Miss Scaler. Of course, and... Miss Scaler's frown transforms into a simple smile. I'll always be here at St. Hammond if you ever wish to talk, Olivia. That goes for you as well, Linko. All right, thanks, Miss Scaler. Olivia turns and leaves the office, reeling past me. Hey, Olivia, what's up? She doesn't respond, instead heading straight for the school's exit. Following after her, I catch a glimpse, I catch a glimpse of Olivia's face. Her face is set with determination. What is this, Undertale? <laughs> I have to move ahead and hold the doors open for Olivia, who be beelines straight for our parked car. Olivia, wait up. She finally stops next to the passenger door, passenger door and turns to me. What's going on? Sophia isn't expecting us for another hour. Good. We have time, then. Time? Do you want to go somewhere else? Yes, I need... Let me guess, the grave. We gotta go visit his grave. Her voice hitches, but she still forces the words out. I need to go see him. See, who? who do you think? She thrusts the papers forward for me to read. Oh, it's the obituary, isn't it? We're nearly there. After hugging the gator girl, you're finally filled with determination. It's not that far away, only a ten minute drive. But a combination of dread and anticipation makes it feel like ten hours. In the seat next to me, Olivia stares at the elevator key in her hand. Part of me thought she would have returned it. Maybe someday. It's not like they can't just make another for a few dollars. It's just important to her. Hope it doesn't rain. Oh, it's going to rain. It's going to rain, Inko. As we pull into the parking lot, I take a hold of her other hand. I can feel the nervous vibrations through her connected palms, and yet her fingers intertwine with, intertwine with mine tightly. It's a solemn place. The grounds are well kept, but still creep up on the old pavement. I help Olivia out of the car once more. The wind is picking up a little. We pass through the arching metal gates. She looks around at the sea of trombones, completely lost. How are we going to find it here? I don't know. Let's just start. I should have asked for more details. Don't worry. We have time. I push Olivia along the gravel trails. Past rows and rows of graves. Or on a rare occasion, a small mausoleum. Without the, pro without the plot number, we have to scan over each tombstone. Oh, did I say that? Trombones instead of tombstones? <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, I'm going to kick myself for that one. Did I not read that one? And we scan each over tombstones carefully. Olivia's breathing picks up. There! It's kind of... It's an unintentionally cute. <laughs> I think that's the one. She's pointing to a small tombstone one row ahead. Without hesitation, I pivot and push Olivia forward to it. Yeah, I know I did. I, As I said, I have speech issues and I probably have reading issues. So, you're going to just have to bear with me. I'm a little challenged. It's a similar plaque at the one at school. Instead of engraved old gold letters, it's simply carved into the stone. Olivia holds a hand out for a bit and lets it fall back onto her lap. We found it. For a while, we rest in silence, just looking at the inscription on it. His teachings will continue in, on into the new generation. I'm startled when Olivia pushes herself out of her wheelchair. She kneels before the small tombstone and I move to kneel beside her. I told you it was going to be raining, guys. Zach, no spamming. Uh, you're going to be the next one muted, trust me. <clears throat> Olivia? I'm fine. It's just, I want to find a, finally tell him, Inko. It takes me only a moment to recall what she's referring to. It was nearly a year ago. That night that invades my dreams from time to time. I nod, laying a hand on her shoulder in solidarity. All right, Olivia. She looks at me and smiles a very fragile smile, and then begins. Mr. Eidekin, you were a lot of things for me. You taught me so much, everything I know when it came to art. And you tried to teach me about myself. Show me a way to live my life that was much, that was better than how it was back then. It used to grate on me when you, you would lecture me about my feelings. But... I know you did it because you gave a damn. You gave a damn about me, about everyone around you. Even when I was being stupid and trying to hide away from everything, you came into my life and showed me that the world wasn't as bad as I saw it. Damn it, caveman. Why do you do this to me? Olivia's eyes turn to me, and I can see the tears flowing freely down her cheeks and over her shaky smile. You were right about him too, Mr. Eidekin. I'm grateful to have you as a mentor. I promise, from now on, to you and to everyone, that I'll live my life unshackled by doubt and fear, like you had always taught me to. Thank you, Mr. Eidekin. Olivia sits back. I hate to think of how I hate to think of how all that was just weighing on her this whole time. But it's gone now. And thank you, Winko. I know it's been hard. And I know you've done so much for me. I promise I'll get better. I promise I'll be someone worth it all. I shut my eyes and move in to hug Olivia. Thank you so much for giving me the time. I love you. I love you too, Olivia. I'll get better. There it is. All the Anons. Olivia Anon.
Not Buster Anon. <laughs> I did it. Dystopia Anon. Stock music. <laughs> oh, chat. Did you try the Olivia mod for Pizza Tower? I don't even have Pizza Tower. I'm not much into the, like, the WarioWare aspect. Or Wario World, I should say. Spoilers. Let me link you an ending guide. Oh, look, there's my drawing! <laughs> Fun, 10 out of 10, bye. Yes, I still stand by it. I knew they'd bring the drawing back somehow. And I threw it into the credits. That's fucking genius, dude. Yeah, third ending. Do they get a special title for it? No, they don't. <laughs> oh... I did it, guys. So, we're going to have to prepare ourselves. I don't know when. I'm going to look at the guide. Maybe we'll take a day break, but we're, we're going to have to really prepare ourselves for the next two endings. So you better get those umbrellas ready. Pizza Tower is fire. Maybe. If, well, you know what? If I somehow... If I somehow come in contact with that game by some other means besides me i'll play the olivia mod okay <laughs> but for now we got some endings to go through <laughs> i need a break it's called recovery ending in the files all right i'll say the fourth ending you were really close to getting yeah i don't doubt that i mean i did i'm not gonna play i'm not gonna blame chat but chat did have an have a hand in a lot of the decisions. So this was a team effort. Now, like two choices you could have done differently. Probably, I wouldn't have doubted it. Now let's see if uh, because we're gonna have a post stream after this. And I gotta see if Blaze is gonna be up for it. Just give me a moment. Let's see if he's still streaming. Team chat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the next endings are gonna be hard to take. I don't even know if I'm gonna keep composed, dude. Oh yeah, he's still live. I mean, if raiding was a thing on YouTube, I'd probably do that, but... <laughs> Damn. <clears throat> Maybe look at the extras. What do we got? Do we got extra scenes for that ending? Help. I need help. Oh, they don't even tell you. Oh, yeah, the, the voice. Self voicing. Hold on, hold on. Self voicing enabled. <laughs> Self voicing disabled. No, no, no. <laughs> Uh, 1.0.6. Be, please visit our website. The mods which we don't have. The drawings that I made. Now, there's nothing here. There's no, uh, hidden scenes or anything. Ending ones is tragic. Two is brutally and depressingly real. Yeah, we're, we have figured because of Snoop Game. Sorry for putting this out there, but I want you at least to be prepared for what's coming for E1 and E2. Yeah. Yeah, we're probably not going to be ready. Yeah, ending four has got to be the last because it's got to be worth it. No extra stories in Snoot game? I don't know. Like, the the extras? There's, there's nothing here. I don't know what caveman was cooking, but they they forgot the entrees here, or the the desserts.
I heard there are extras like in Snoot. Oh, I'd assume. E2 is far more human and real than in Snoot. Than Snoot is the thing. I wouldn't doubt it. Like the caveman. Like I'd consider Snoot like their prototype. They're type to really like feel around the waters and get a get a use of the things, you know. So they're they're coming out punching and swinging with this one, and I felt it. Okay, once we get all the endings, maybe they'll add it later. So for the endings, we're mostly gonna speed through the pro. Yeah, we're probably gonna speed through the things we've already seen, but I'll read like stuff I haven't read before. I don't know, I guess I'm just sitting here until Blaze is ready. Unless you guys want to see something extra. I got 70 viewers here. <laughs> I don't know if anyone's going to want to see anything else besides the gator. There's even more ending. Yeah, there's three more endings. Thanks for your streams. Thanks a lot. No, thank you for being here. Like, I don't know, like, how the how the tone would be here if it was just like me and like two other people. I mean, it'd still be it'd still be as long as they're chatty. Yeah, it'd still be good. But damn, seventy. Well, now sixty-eight. <laughs> a lot of people here. Just crazy. You know what, scene, let's make more people uncomfortable. Seeing as we did make an ending, could treat you guys to something stupid. And I gotta make sure it's turned off first before I jump in. Oh, it's turned on, that's not good. Okay, now I'm ready. Do you intend to do the other endings live? Yes, we're going to do those live the best we can. <laughs> this would be so dumb. I'll have to pro I think I have to press the program twice for it to work, which is stupid. Yeah, you gotta like smack it twice. I swear VC face is a piece of crap. That light on. All right, showtime. Showtime? Oh, there I am. There we go. So many chat said that the Android version was out. I didn't catch that. definitely be there to see it yeah i don't know uh, what time i'd be doing it though thanks for the stream fork no thank you for being here Me it really means a lot i'm still waiting for the chat to catch up and realize the the vtuber thing here VTuber. Go back to 2D. Are you really that afraid of this? Okay, you know what? We're doing a poll. Um, give me the poll. Start poll. VTuber. Good or bad? Good. Bad. Bad, go back to, go back to PNG. There we go, pulls up. I'm already used to 2D, sorry. During my stay for this ending, see you for the next three, yeah. And of course, well no, I can, I have the chat on the other one here. Let me move this here. 
Um, I have college, so if it's the usual time, it'll be fine by me. I'll take a quick break from the screen. If you'd be still around, if I... we're going to do a post stream. I'm indifferent. This was, uh, well, let me look at the poll. 17 votes. More say, more say good. So maybe I'll do the rest of the streams with the VTuber. The only thing I don't like about this avatar is it's got a really awkward side profile. And I don't know if I want to show you guys because it's definitely a little off-putting. People want the VTuber to say. I'd be happy to use the VTuber for this from now on. But yeah, here. All right, get ready for the side profile. I'm going to do it for like five seconds. And if you don't want to look, don't look. But it, it's it's pretty bad. Like, look at this. Look at this. This is a horrible side profile. <laughs> oh god i i mean i look i look so good front facing but god side the this, this side profile is just awful i don't mean to dunk on the the original artist but for what it is the avatar was very affordable i am kaylee i like the animations is that someone else in chat I just want to say blaze mask to confuse everyone. I don't know if I have the blaze mask uh, readily available. Are you sure you're right? That's Jover. Let's keep looking at the poll. How many people are voting? 23 votes with more saying, or 74 saying, 75 now saying, oh, someone, someone keeps voting and unvoting. Yeah, most people say good. Oh, now it says error. YouTube is not ready or something. YouTube is not responding. Sounds like something on OBS would do. Yeah, side profile is a bit goofish. Maybe one of these days, if uh, I get into some decent money, we'll go for a really fancier avatar. Like a $200 worth one. I don't know. I don't feel brave to, like... Like, I have money, but it's like I'm not brave enough to, like, trust people with it, you know? Like, what if I what if I get a stinker, you know? That's a good new look. This look ain't new. This isn't a new look. It may be new to you, but I've been using this for at least over a year. From the side, you look bald. You'd see, you'd see the balding. Like, you'd only offer so many, like, polygons and stuff, I guess. Or else I'd probably be paying more out the ass. We still have 45 people. Yeah, people are seeing them themselves out. And it's alright. We're not doing any more of this tonight. we will be switching to some Tower Unite. Keep the VTuber. At 30 votes and it's still mostly the same. Yeah, we'll probably keep the VTuber. Though I'd probably have to shrink myself down a little bit more, so I'm that way I'm not like blocking the the text. Dang, almost 40 likes on this stream. That is nuts, you guys. That's like an OC for Snoop game. Well, let me tell you, I have a lot of art on my character. <laughs> I don't know. I wanted I wanted to get a Ankylosaurus for a Snoop game OC. I don't know. One of these days I'll get around to it. Oh, it came right back at the end of the game. I see. I hope the ending three was a tearjerker similar to Snoop. Yeah, it was bittersweet. It it left off on a good note. I wouldn't mind seeing like an epilogue for it though. Even though it's probably not the canon ending, I still feel like I really want more of a cemented uh, ending, you know? Like, I hope uh, I hope Olivia's streaming career takes off. And I hope they can re reconcile with everyone, you know? It's good, but it's it's not, like, solidified good. It was a good stream. Thanks for playing this game. See y'all tomorrow. Well, I don't know if I'm going to be streaming uh, Wani tomorrow. I might be taking a break. I've been I've been flapping my lips for a while now. Like, add up all the hours together. I think I deserve at least one day off. 
Do you know who has plenty of relationships is can it's another ending. I don't know what that means. Wani is in on Android now. Is it on their uh their website, their XYZ site? Ending three is like eating a sweet that at the end has a sour taste bordering on salty. Which you where is it? I gotta it's that stupid thing. I gotta bump chat. But don't want to repeat. I just want a little bit more closure on that. Like, do do they like reconcile with former uh, friends? Like, what's happening with everyone else? You know. Yeah, I'm just gonna close poll. I should have closed poll in a while back. <laughs> <clears throat> Are you sure about that? Yes, I just checked it. How oh, about Android? Now let me drop into Blaze's stream through my phone so that way I'm not like screwing around. Advertisement, no! Get out of here, that's gross. It's only one person watching Blaze. That's. Come on, the dude came back. He needs more people in here. I know my. Probably my top down profile, like if I lean down, probably looks weird too. Well appreciated for the narration. No problem. I, I enjoyed reading. No, it's on the itch.io page, but it seems to have problems. Wanted to get the game, but in the current currency conversion, it costs like five times the normal price in dollars. Well, see if you can find someone who can get it cheaper, you know. Like, what is it? That was that thing on YouTube where people were buying, like, what was it? Argentine and pesos or something? Or like super chats? I'm sure you can find like a foreign buddy who can get it cheaper and buy it for you. And you can just pay him back or something. There we go. Black box. What do you mean black box? Using VPN. Oh, are you talking about the advertisements I was complaining about? <laughs> oh, wait, wait. No, no. You're talking about uh, pricing converting through VPN. I do not have the tech brain <laughs> for all that. I usually just buy whatever. I feel like it's like something I have to need have to want like this game like i buy it day one i don't usually do day ones i usually wait for a sale but with indies i trust i'll go day one blaze is gonna go for another half hour i don't know what to do man we're just gonna sit here and talk and then i could like throw up a game or something but I feel like the game itself would probably just drive people away. It's like a, between a rock and a hard place. Like literally a rock and a hard place. It's a, it's between Olivia and, and chat. I'm between a rock and a hard place. <laughs> Even speaking in English is difficult since I'm from Brazil. I've known a few people from Brazil over at Blaze's stream way back. Uh, get rid of those discord messages it's on youtube or twitch what are you talking about now let me look my steam real quick
Or if I can play some kind of game to keep you guys entertained for like a half an hour. Oh man, I could drop the, the very sussiest shit ever. I don't know if I should. I kind of feel bad for you. When Wani fire dies down, many would probably take their leave and your general streams would not have much interaction going. Well, that's where people like you, Nario, come in. If I have like... If I have one Nario, then that's that's good enough for me. <laughs> if I have people like you that just keep coming back and chilling in the streams, then I can't complain. Drop it? Drop what? Drop it. <laughs> Steam has no, n nuisances now for buying gifting games and different currencies, meaning that if you... If difference between gifter and the gifted currency, then is big then steam won't allow it that's dumb do it so i have another game that's highly sus that i could probably toy around for a bit i it's 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 a furry game so <laughs> i don't even know why i'm asking this you guys are here for gators so i it shouldn't be no it shouldn't be a uh issue but I'm gonna say if you if you like Olivia, you might like this one. You could play Lethal Company. I'm not playing a horror game. Here, I'm gonna I'm gonna close the game. Goodbye, Olivia. We are going to play a different game. Among Us. Yeah, the sus game. No, I see sus. I mean it's like dangerously furry. Oh my god, I'm going to regret this. I know I am. 48 people. My god. I've already played the shit out of this demo game, but... You know what, for 30 minutes we can have fun. Olivia. <laughs> Bootleg Olivia. Because why not? I'm back. What did I miss? We finished the ending. Yeah, you take a picture now. Do it now, buddy. Do it now. The upturn among us. No, we're... Amorius? No, we're not getting that dangerously sus. Hell no. That'd get me banned. The Gat is the same. <laughs> yes, it is. It's still it's still the same. Jesus, that that jiggle physics. We'll be playing some sus game. Yes, this is the sus game. Oh dang, they robbed me of all my points. My God. Wait, what's going on? What's going on here? Ooh, we got storage now. remove those finally we can get rid of these but where are the physics on those boobs is this a diablo like pretty much it's kind of it's kind of a mmo ish it's pseudo oh yeah that one game with the goat i don't have that one but i know the the goat there has a huge butt <laughs> do you sell anything new No, you don't. I need to put my skill points back on. I don't know why it keeps... Well, I think every update probably removes them. I wanted to say Gunfire be be Reborn, but the furry world of Warcraft, I guess. I can show this game out if anyone wants the link. Um, it's, it's not available right now on Steam, but there is a Patreon to grab the demo or... The beta, I should say. How do you manage to play with... Oh. Miguel, I have... I probably have a little bit more class than you do. But then again, this isn't... Is, this isn't supposed to be one of those kind of games. This is just a game where it's... It's funny little fan service. That puts a smile on people's face. But uh, here, here's the game. If you ever want to wishlist it, 
It's right there. All right, I'm gonna go get the quest on. What the heck is going on? We came in a little too late. We just finished uh, one of the endings. So if you ever want to go back and check that out, go for it. Actually, what am I doing? I keep forgetting I need to set my skills and stuff. Just, just all of them. We're going to kill people. Just do it. Oh, wait, why did I put sword mastery? I'm dumb. I have an axe. <laughs> Alright, we're good. I don't know which way is more, the map or the polygons of the great, of the yacht right there. Uh, poor, poor Olivia. I mean, she's got fronts too. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward to the early access for this game. The developer says uh, game's probably playing for early access in early midsummer. All right, time to murder hogs. Owie. That's right there. <laughs> the budget went on that. <laughs> yeah. It's only one person making it, too, so... Good on them, man. I want to go one-on-one. -on -one. Helmet. Put on the helmet. What do I got? It's pretty much the same thing. Can't do this no more. What do you got? It, it's it's a uh, elf slang for ass. <laughs> it means it means big butt. <laughs> Bro, be coding one handed. Dead. Ow. Yeah, I died. <laughs> it's not fair, I couldn't see. Okay, maybe I should have put some stuff in uh vitality. Uh, oh my fast travel's gone, that's great. Go do little silly things, guys. Well, uh, have fun with that. Um, I'm hoping this didn't cause anything to do that. a lock on lock on feature that I don't use because I'm using melee. Is this gonna be a single player game or is it gonna be multi there is multiplayer right now. If Howling was still on he could he could easily join me. 
There's multiplayer available right now in the Patreon build. And it's easy access too. You just pledge five bucks on the Patreon and then you get messaged the code to... It's a Steam beta code, which then you can play the game. You can join me. You can make your own little bootleg Olivia. I mean, I can't show this game enough. I, I like this game. I got, a, I got a few streams on this game, too, if you want to check those out. It, it's, a, it's a rough start, but I, I eventually get used to, like, the gameplay. Because I got my ass handed me a lot starting out. I don't know if I'll play funny gator game. Ain't too interested in visual novels. That's fair. That's why you're here to watch it instead of play it. <laughs> well, his friends don't care about he him getting killed. Though I will stay in the future if someone gets me gets me it in the Airzet game. I play both. The airs it. Oh, the airs it game. I think that's that one, uh, Wands of Gamelon parody or something. Ow. I don't know, Gator and Arzet released the same day, and I just find it funny. Yeah, that's that, uh, Zelda parody, isn't it? watching this and playing Max Payne right now. Well, there's not much... Well, I'd say that, but then again, there's Jiggle Physics. There's probably people just watching this for one thing. Well, they, can't, they make it where you can't zoom in on there, but you know why they're watching. Alright, I got my shit and I can head back. Cash it in. <clears throat> yeah. I thought so. Don't go there, don't sell my shit just yet. Like if you think my character's got an ass, you should you should check the goat girl. <laughs> yeah, she's carrying the cake. <laughs> my god. Actually I'll take that quest again. I need to grind levels. Because there's no other quest to get. Super fun game, I think. This game you're saying or I mean, this game, this game's fun, but it is also very short right now because it's still in the beginning stages. Uh, why did I take this instead of the fast travel? Return to say bye, and oh dear, what bug? Oh, you came back at the wrong time. We're we're playing the other. We're playing the other Gator game. Don't tell them, guys. Oh, I'm about to die again. And it's real. I've. Iwani is finally on Android. Oh, nice. Yeah, I'm still live for a bit. We're going to end the stream around 9.30 in about 20 or so minutes and then uh, restart with some Tower Unite. Oops. 
to stop. That wasn't smart. <laughs> I died. I was talking about this, that alien game. What the hell is this? This is this is the new Wani Gator. <laughs> oh, I love confusing people. What am I doing there? I don't need that. Actually, let's sell some items. Ten defense. Of that. Only now my problem is how I'm going to buy the game. Debit card, cash card, gift card. Oh, did I guys sh did I show you guys the sus boss in this game? Let me see my new armor. Damn. I want to hug that gator too. Revenge of the Snoop. Did you finish the game? Yeah, we did. We're just chilling around until Blaze is ready. Does this game have anything to do with FNAF? Because that's a nice Fazbear there. What does that even mean? I just lost my credit card and I canceled it, so now I... Oh, you can get a gift card. Gift cards are free. Buy one of those loadable debit cards. Now, I'll show you the sus boss. But you guys gotta promise to contain yourselves, okay? Thick. <laughs> yes, we know. We know Olivia's really thick. I hope some of the people will still watch your other streams. There's there's quite a handful that do. I'm thankful for that. What do you mean, uh-oh, doggo? Credit cards are real if you believe in them. The credit cards from the store operator are free. You just have to take them. Alright, time to smash some slimes. Remember, guys, you, you, you gotta contain yourselves when you see it. We're, we're going to be on our best behavior. These guys don't even give XP anymore. Let's see. Wait. Let's see what I'll do rather than all that familiar member for money. Don't worry. I know when the furry does the sus, I'm not spooked. That that's because you're a, you're a, a a bird furry. It's not a promise. Just be nice, guys. Be nice to the boss. Ow. Rude. There she is. Come on, do, do the thing. 
Do the thing. So pe yeah, do the thing so the chat goes wild. I call myself a feather fag. Thank you very much. She's dead. I've seen the blue site enough to know where this is going. Yeah, we don't talk about the blue site. We don't talk about the blue site. I've got I've got to go to sleep. See you next live. Bye. Alright. Alright. Alright, where am I going? Good night. Good night, Joriel. Thanks for thanks for joining in. <laughs> Sandman's like nice. I say we all behaved ourselves really well. I gotta try using the lock on feature more. Maybe that helps me. Oh god, the, the camera tilt. Oh, that's not good. No. Man, I do not. I do not do good with this class. I thought I was good. The blue site, the green site, if you go do deeper enough, even the brown site. So, I know the two first sites. If, if we're saying the brown site, is that, is that where Snoot started? Zen knows too much. Could you explain more? So, the blue site is the funny number site. The green site is the rule... The, one of the rules of the internet site, and the brown is, I'm thinking, 4chan, if I had to guess. I was actually wordless for what I saw. What do you mean, saw? Are you talking about this game? Yeah, I'm not taking three of them on at once. What did I, what did I, what did I pick up? Warrior leggings. What do I got on now? Five defense, six defense, two attack power. Yeah, was this armor actually added in recently? I want to look at it more. Why does it look like she's got no pants on? Oh my god. This game, man. I sure I know the other both was sarcasm by the way but the the brown site that's what I'm thinking it's fortune in that one site that the one uh the one category that sh shall not be named the one where Snoop got banished to, if you know what I'm talking about. That's what I'm thinking. I just realized I have top chat on. Like, why am I top chatting? Now I'm like probably missing chats. I 
as Doctor Who says, I've seen many things you wouldn't believe. I mean, same here. I've been I've been a furry for over for almost 18 years now. I've seen things I wish I hadn't. I have lost things that you will never understand, and I know things, secrets that must never be must that never be told and knowledge that might must never be spoken. Got her up. He died in the middle of the air. And as I say, I want big friggin' anime titties. I agree. Where's all the fan service gone in most games, dude? The fan service nowadays, you have to go to, like, indie for this crap. And I mean, I'm not complaining. This game looks really good. I love this game. I'm glad it's got the fan service. What actually is this? I linked this game earlier. It's called Atlas. There's a Steam page. And even though I say Atlas, the spelling's funny. Actually, I might have the... Oh, I'm about to die. Hold on. Oh, we're not returning. I need to heal. I probably have the link. Yep, I'm gonna shill it. This is the game. Right here. I realize I have everything I need I can turn in. I saw goodbye Volcano High gameplay and I was like, is that it? Is that all? Yeah, the caveman in thought the same thing too. Though you say though you say 18 years as a furry, you def you're definitely older than I am. Yeah, I'm I'm old. Like I said with uh ending three when they said when uh they looked at Eidekin's gravestone, he's like, he's not much older than me. I just sound young. I don't belong here. I'm out. I'm sorry, Panda. Don't worry. It's only like 14 people here. We'll be fine. I can manage. Spooked out, Panda. Panda's not a furry. That's okay. It's we're at my, we're on uh, manageable levels right now. I can manage 14 people. Uh, don't want to go that way. Right behind you, Panda. Don't worry. We'll be back to some in about probably 10 minutes we'll be back with some normal games that aren't furry. I wonder if I'm losing subscribers because of this game. That'd be hilarious. Now you always gotta filter out some people. Oh, you're not you're not coming after me. No. Oh buddy. Twenty-five right now. Wait, are you, I would say you are thirty-five. I mean you're not too far off. I'm not gonna say where though. We gotta keep our mouth shuts about that. What do you mean? About furry stuff? Probably. Oh my god, I'm gonna die. Twenty-five viewers. Oh, twenty it's so it says sixteen for me, but Whatever, maybe they're ghost viewers. Not age. Oh, 35. Oh, wait, you said, you're saying I'm 35, 25 is the viewers. 
I'm slow. I'm not smart. I die to pigs. Oh my god, sit still. I gotta heal. Now, let me text someone real quick. I took off my weapon. Yeah, the uh, anthro stuff. I'm sure civilized. I'm sure civilized about it. I know how people are uncomfortable about it. I don't know. I mean, yeah, I guess I guess I am kind of a furry, but I don't know. I mean, what you you come into the channel, you see an anthro porcupine. What are you supposed to expect? Since when did you become VTuber? Like a year ago. When did you drop out of the stream, Snessy? I thought you were watching the whole time. You missed the ending. We finally finished the game. Oh god, I'm gonna die. Okay, I'm not gonna die. What do we got? Literally nothing. Cool. Find the helmet. <laughs> I think the helmet looks pretty cool, but I like the hair better. I'm wondering when we're getting capes, because that's going to be pretty cool. Guess I saved myself from that spoiler. True. I'll be there for you when you're ready. Don't need to turn in the quest yet. Use a stim pack. I'm fully healed. Besides, the only healing item in this game so far is cake. Thirty-three people now. Jeez. Well, we only got like three minutes left, so I'm gonna feel bad for Blaze when he gets in here. <laughs> He's gotta see this whole alligator cake. Kind of a furry. Yeah, I said this to myself years ago. Well, I mean, I'm just saying it because it's YouTube and all that. I know what I am. <laughs> Killer iron sword. You know what? Let's let's try the sword out. Oh, you have two of them. Cake. One word, diabetes. More like diabuddies. That was a stupid joke. Oh, I'm gonna die. I, I know you, thousand year stare. A thousand yard stare. Oh, I wonder how you got the ending three. What do you mean? How do you how do you know?
make your avatar do cool spin. You mean that? Are you talking about like pool spin? Imagine the fact that you didn't kiss her on the forehead that time that made you what that was that it? The the fact I didn't kiss her. Bruh, I'd I'd be rethinking my life. way. Right, I'm gonna go to the next hog area. I think I like the hammer better. Butterfly effect. <laughs> Oh, come on. Come on, get up there. Yeah, I should probably heal. Three fucking pigs. They're gonna follow me to hell and back if I don't kill them. Oh my god. Oh my god. Now the other pigs are gonna follow. Oh my god. Uh, I, I can't do melee anymore. I got too used to range, and now I'm just... I'm weak. <laughs> oh. Plus, it's probably easier if I have other people helping me. Like, I wonder. Hold on. Humor me for a moment. Is there anyone playing multiplayer? Hold on, I'm gonna I'm gonna just join in on some randos. I gotta readjust my seat. My ass is just dying. People. I wonder if this they're all AFK in their level twenties. Why are they AFK? This is like some weird... Okay, I don't have my warp. AFK gang. What classes exist so far? Uh, warrior and mage. I don't know why I'm here. <laughs> Oh, did Blaze end his stream? Yeah, he's ending his stream. Oh, my points are still there. Mage gang, let's go. I do have a mage class. Hold on. I do have other classes. Oh, that's my sword. I think this is my mage. Sorry, we're not playing with the gator girl anymore.
just to I was expecting Ranger or Blade Master or something. It's still it's still very, very, very much beta. I I under I un ironically wish I could give your avatar some head rubs. You wish, not which. Are you talking about the VTuber avatar? Are you talking Oh, that's what you meant by spin is the the avatar. That thing. I thought you meant like my character in game. I'm calling. Okay. Well, looks like we gotta end the stream here, guys. I'm gonna. I'll be right back, and we'll be playing some uh, Tower Unite. <laughs>